Park in Arlington, Texas. It's the first of 20 meetings between the Seattle Mariners and the Texas Rangers. And if they call the wind Mariah, Mariah's mother is in town tonight because it is blowing up a storm for game one. And to you all in the Pacific Northwest, a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the ballpark in Arlington. Alex Rodriguez's new home, Dave Peehouse, along with Ron Fairley. Alex Rodriguez is obviously our storyline tonight because it's the first time the Mariners will have played their ex-teammate. And in talking to him before the ball game for a radio interview, he didn't appear to be nervous, but I have an idea he is a little bit. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Alex is uh, very much up for this game. And he understands that he's playing against his former teammates. He has a great deal of respect for the guys in the Mariner dugout. Should be a very interesting game, I think. Well, if you think he's edgy tonight, what do you think it's going to be like on the 16th when he's up there at Safeco Field to face you fans for the first time? Let's check tonight's Lexus starting pitchers. Our pitchers brought to you by your Puget Sound Lexus dealers. First of all, Jamie Moyer for the Mariners. Jamie did not face the Texas Rangers all of last year. However, he does have a lifetime mark of four and two against the Rangers. A man who was undefeated against the Mariners last year, Rick Helling. Rick Helling can be tough. He's going to throw a lot of fastballs. Get ready for that fastball that's going to come up there anywhere from 88 to 91 miles an hour. He was 3-0 and against the Mariners last year, 4-1 and lifetime. Alex Rodriguez, of course, a big prize in baseball last year, a quarter of a billion dollar prize. But down here in Texas, they added other pieces they think that will help get them back on top in the West. And with more on that story, Here's Rich Wall. Yeah, I'm just trying to battle the wind down here right now, David. You're right. The, the, the circus and the wind that has blown in town with Alex Rodriguez, there have been some Rangers that snuck into town on the corners. Even though Andres Galarraga is a first baseman, he's DHing for this team. And Ken Caminiti is at third base. They do, however, have some immediacy to them in a fact that they better win now because Caminiti hasn't played a full season since 98, and Galarraga turns 40 in June. This is a veteran team with a few young stars. The Texas Rangers right now at 2-2, two and two, and they feel if they're going to make a run, they want to make it now while they've got their veterans and they've got their young superstar at shortstop. It is a windy, windy day. Ichiro. Boy, they didn't even swarm around him. They all wanted to talk to Alex today as the Mariners get set to take on the Texas Rangers. It's coming up next. Back here in Arlington, Texas, we've started early, and Ichiro has two strikes on him. And you've just looked at the third pitch thrown in the ball game, and the breaking ball is outside. So the count, a ball and two strikes as Rick Helling, the 30-year-old from uh, North Dakota, uh, starting his second start. He started opening day in Puerto Rico for the Texas Rangers was a loser that pitch is line fair down the left field line toward the corner and Ichiro who can fly is on his way for second base and he'll stand there with the leadoff double so Ichiro with the count one and two on him goes the other way and lines it sharply down the left field line. Take a look at this uh, replay as you can see they're trying to pitch him away fastball away Ichiro says well if you're going to pitch me that way I'll just take it to left field. Keeps the front shoulder in there well, takes it down the left field line. The Mariners got a man down there in scoring position right off the bat. And here's Mark McLemore. McLemore, who makes his home down here in Arlington, Texas. Not too far from the airport, looking to hit that ball to the right side, getting his first start of the year. And against Helling, he has had tremendous success. A 417 batting average, five hits in 12 at bats. Brett Boone on his birthday, sitting this one out. Boone, 32 years of age this evening, so happy birthday to the Mariners' uh, second baseman who started the three-game series just completed against Oakland. High fastball, and that ball is drilled to deep center field, and Curtis going back. That baby's going to be fly away over the 407 sign, and what a rude awakening for Rick Helling. A double down the left field line. Mark McLemore, the first pitch he saw this year was in a pinch hitting role, and he doubled into the gap in right center field. And here in his first at bat down in Texas, he hits one out over the 407 marker. And just like that, the Mariners are up two to nothing. Fastball up and out of the plate, and look at the stroke by McLemore as he jumped all over this pitch. Over the 407 mark, as you mentioned, Dave, but that ball is carrying extremely well to right center field and to straightaway right field. Edgar Martinez, speaking of hot, is the hitter. All Edgar has done is go eight for 10, hitting 800. 
And his on base percentage is unbelievable. 857. His slugging percentage is 900. And the slider is outside. First home run hit by the Mariners this year, Dave. Number one in the fourth game of the year. John Oldenburg, the hitter. On the outside corner, Paul Emmel is the man calling balls and strikes tonight. There's Paul. Tim McClellan at first base. Ebra Quano is at second. And Mike DeMuro is around at third. You can see the wind blowing. Hamill's shirt. Breaking ball high and outside. Wind 33 to 35 miles an hour. Going in from right field, but that's deceiving at this ballpark because it, when the wind blows in, it kind of circulates and spins around here. And really, the wind is blowing out to right field down the playing field. And that's lined into right field for a base hit. The Mariners continue to tap to the baseball as Edgar heads for third base, and he will make it standing up. So Edgar Martinez from first to third as Olerud singes a line drive into right field. And the first four board for the Mariners for Mike Cameron, who's off to an unbelievable start himself, hitting 444. And then will bring out Larry Hardy, the pitching coach, right away to have a little visit. With uh, last year a 16 game winner for the Texas Rangers. Keep in mind, he was 3 0 against the Mariners last year, 4 1 lifetime. And here's a guy that has given the Mariners a difficult time, but the Mariners are jumping on him early. Look at these guys that do damage to Texas from last year. Two of them over 400, Gingham and Edgar. And then Cameron up there hit a 326 clip against them last year, and here he is. And that man is just uh, giving the Mariners a 2 nothing lead. Mark Backlamore. Tammy hits it high and foul out of play off the first base side. The Rangers pummeled by the Anaheim Angels last night 10 3 after they won the first two games of the series after losing to the Toronto Blue Jays in the Major League opener in San Juan Puerto Rico on Sunday. So they are 2 and 2 on the year. Inside. One ball, one strike. Edgar Martinez at third and John Olerud over at first. Texas, of course, will give up the third run to get a shot at a double play here. Out of play. Hey, that's the ninth home run allowed by the Texas Rangers pitching staff. And this is only the what? Their, well, it's their fifth game. Elling's got some very impressive numbers over the last few years. Very few pitchers in baseball have better numbers in the long run than Rick Elling. And he got slow breaking ball. Strikes. I think Mike was looking for something else. Looked like he took something off the breaking ball. Didn't throw his curveball as hard as he normally throws it, but you can see it had a nice break to it as you take a look at the three starts that he had against the Mariners last year. 7.2 hits per nine innings. ERA 3.6 and was 3-0. Al Martin up there now. 
taking the curve low and inside ball one one ball and no strikes. Got to figure out a way to get that runner in from third base. You got to need to pick up one more run here in the inning. Two balls, no strikes the count on Al Martin. One for five on the new campaign. Although it doesn't figure that the John Olerud is going to try to steal. When you have a catcher like Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate, you basically shut down the opponent's running game. When you have a catcher back there that throws as well as he does. Two and one. On Al Martin. Texas has had their own offensive outage so far this year, basically, in the four games. They're not hitting the ball that well either. Good pitch. You've got to come away with at least one more run in this situation. Absolutely. Runner at third base with nobody out. Figure out a way of getting that runner in from third. Way up and in, outside I should say, not in, and the count is full, three and two, and there's Carlos Guillen, a man who hits Helling well. Inside and low, and the bases are loaded for Carlos Guillen. Guillen has struggled with the bat at the beginning, but we remember only three games into this season. Alex and our interview, prior to our interview we did with him for radio, was asking, how's Carlos? And I said, well, he's struggling a little bit with the bat right now. I said, he'll be just fine. He just, you know, stay, stays healthy. Well, we know that. And he's going to be outstanding. And he can turn all the plays at shortstop, make all the defense. Candy to Carlos for strike on one. Along with the quarter of a billion dollars came a huge pack of rocks, and he's got half of them in his hip pocket tonight. Stay anchored out there at shortstop. Up and in, and down he goes. Kid looking for the curveball, might look for a pitch away, and so when they come inside, sometimes it gets a little bit close to you like that. And obviously, with bases loaded in the first inning, struggling at Hilling, that was not intentional whatsoever. Popped up and coming back, Pudge Rodriguez, and he's going to run out of room. And there's a lot of foul territory behind home plate here. Almost as, as much at, as at Yankee Stadium. That's so far this year. Two for seven with his sacks loaded. Over but low. One thing they're making Helling work here in the first inning. But the only run scored so far on the two run home run. There's Martin. First base. Ball and a ground ball hit to first. Palmero bobbles the ball. Everybody's going to be safe. The ball gets away from the pitcher. A run scores. Rafael Palmero, gold glove of two years ago, had a jump up in his lap and he dropped the ball trying to grab it and throw to the pitcher covering. And the Mariners get a 
huge break. I think Palmero was thinking going to second to start a double play, and he didn't do either. Well, that's true. And then he's trying to throw the ball. Still had time to get that lead runner, but then he dropped it and then tossed the ball a little bit wide of the pitcher covering. So an error by Palmero. And the Mariners still have things going. Once again, picks it up. Now the underhanded toss right off the fingertips of the pitcher. And Tommy Lampkin. Tommy Lampkin will be the hitter. As Helling is uh, looking uh, at a 30 pitch inning at least here in the first inning. He's already thrown 28, unless Lampkin would hit into a double play ball, uh, give a double play ball here in the first pitch, and he fouls the pitch off and the count 0 and 1. When Ron and I took a van to go to dinner last night, we asked the driver, are they sold out tonight? Last night, he said, oh, yeah. He said, are they sold out tomorrow night? <coughs> oh, yeah. That's hit deep, foul down the right field line. But last night, they weren't anywhere close to selling out. And tonight, this place may be half full. That's all. Oh, yeah. He may have been thinking about the hotel. <laughs> yeah, the hotel sold out. And that's lined in the right field for a base hit. And Oldwood's going to score. Cameron to third base. He'll pull up there. A Martin to third base, I should say. He'll pull up there, and the sacks remain loaded. As the Mariners keep just hammering away at Rick Helling. That's already four hits in the inning. And David Bell, the ninth man to come to the plate. By any account, a nightmarish first inning for Rick Helling. And of course, with the offense that Texas has, you cannot get enough runs. Ball one, one ball in their start. Already with four in the bank, Mr. Moyer. Two and oh. David Bell, who has never hit a grand slam home run, has got to be looking fastball here. And the cyclone effect of the wind pushes everything out to right field here. Wind comes in, goes around the stadium, pushes it out to right. And they're just like that. And that pitch is going to be blown back into the stands. Foul. Only one man has hit oh, the upper deck in right field. And that is the center fielder tonight, Chad Curtis, as you look at the 34 pitches expected. By Rick Kelly. But only one right hand batter's ever gone up there. And a double play ball. Hit to Bellardi to A Rod, and A Rod throw to first. And it's over. But the Mariners. Four big ones here in the first inning, and they leave two. And as we're underway, the Mariners have four in the bank. The Rangers coming up. Here with four big runs in their half of the first inning. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines for the Texas Rangers. Here's the way that uh, Johnny Oates will be going here in game one. It'll be Greer, Velarde, Velarde, Alex, Palmero, Rodriguez, Galarraga, Caminiti, Curtis, and Mateo. Alex Rodriguez, four for 16 so far this season. The scouting report on Jamie Moy. Of course, you know if you have seen Jamie work at all, his best pitch, out pitch, has to be his changeup. And 44% fastballs, a third of these pitches will be change-ups, this being his first start of the year. Well, Rusty Greer, who was injured a lot of last year, uh, the man that I think really makes this ball club tick is healthy this year. He's been given an extension of his contract, and he's up there to start it for the Texans. <laughs> Jamie Moyer, and Moyer right down the middle with a fastball for a strike, 0-1. Only three for 14 starting the year. Dave, I was talking with Jamie before the game, and I said, wouldn't it be nice if the 
ball club could give you a few runs early in the game on which to work. And he says, boy, he says, would he love that? He says, that's the greatest thing in the world you can do for a pitcher is to score three or four runs early in the game. Well, they've given him a four spot. Let's see what he can do with it tonight. So everything right now, advantage Jamie. Nothing but fastballs so far to Rusty Greer. Well, Greer is one of these left-hand hitters that for some reason gives Moyer a difficult time, and Jamie is very much aware of that. I chopper back to the mound, and Moyer has it and throws him out. And I said, well, what is it that he does that seems to give you this tough time? He said, I just don't have a feel for what Greer is trying to do up there at the plate. And he says, I hope that I get some kind of an idea here tonight. Well, first time up. Been able to do all right. 38 year old Randy Velarde coming over from the Angels. He is Alex's new double play partner. And he does not hit Moyer very well. In fact, only a 154 batting average against Moyer. And that is a little outside. You have to wonder what is going through number three's head as he has that familiar practice swing on deck with that leaded weight on the back. There is a strike and the count two and one. Dave Velarde did not hit that well average wise against the Mariners last year, but boy, he sure had some key hits while he's with the eight. It's off to a pretty good start. He's the only Texas Ranger that has a, at least one hit in every game thus far. Yeah, right on the outside corner, and here comes Alex Rodriguez for the first time this year. To face his ex teammates. Alex does not have a home run. He does not have an RBI. However, he does have a track record against Jamie Moyer. He faced him a couple of times while Moyer was with Baltimore and had a one for two day against Jamie Moyer. Takes high. I think it's interesting to note that on opening night, Alex Rodriguez was number three in the pecking order as far as ovations were concerned. Number one was Pudge Rodriguez, the catcher. One ball, one strike. Number two was Rafael Palmero. And number three, Alex Rodriguez. You would think that the newcomer and the so called best player in baseball. Would have received the biggest ovation. Not down here. You'll have to earn it. Foul back and the count one and two. Well, I think the other guys have a little bit of a head start on Alex. And they've had some great years. Palmero and uh, Pudge has had outstanding seasons down here, and the fans are a little bit more familiar. But uh, give Alex the chance. Uh, awfully talented young man. Fastball up, and that's usually a rod's meet. And that was. Last year, probably a ball, and that's a pitch that you're going to have to take a hack at this year. Well, you better swing at it because the umpire is going to ring you up unless you do. So you might as well learn how to hit that pitch. Alex had a pretty good cut at it. And Jamie, one of the few fastballs up. Another one. Two and two. Lampkin calling for the change. There it is, and a high pop-up on the left side, and David Bell drifting into foul territory makes the catch and a perfect first ball for Jamie Moyer against the Texas Rangers. Three up and three down. Coming back, it'll be the second time through the lineup for Rick Kelly. And after one, the Mariners lead Texas by a score of four to nothing. Mariners baseball is brought to you by Safeco, proud sponsor of the Seattle Mariners. Hey, Jack in the box, where we won't make it till you order it. 
by Pennzoil, protection under the toughest driving conditions, and by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom, one mission, low fares. Well, here's Ichiro, the second time up in as many innings. He doubled down the left field line. His first at bat and singles right back up the middle. His second at bat on the first pitch. Dave, I think that Ichiro's starting to get an idea as to how some of these teams are going to pitch to him. And the young man is making some adjustments up there at the plate. And he's off to, I think, an outstanding start. He now has six hits in 15 at bats in his uh, major league career. Look at it again. Once again, they tried to pitch him out over the plate, and that's right down his alley. They're saying the wind is now 26 miles an hour. Going out toward right. Strike to McLemore. He hit that line drive, that rising line drive over the 407 side. Might see Lou feel a little aggressive here. He's leading four to nothing. And uh, with Ichiro at first base, big hole between Palmero and Velarde. And you have McLemore up there thinking about the pulling the ball to hold. We might see the hit and run here. And that's line fouled on the right field line. See how McLemore went out and tried to hook that ball past the first baseman. So Mack having a pretty good idea of the plate there. As you had mentioned, he hits Helling well. But you have that big hole over there between first and second. And if you're a left-hand hitter, you like to be able to get the bat out in front because if you can bounce the ball through that hole with the speed of each row, he'll be able to go around to third base. <laughs> now that the count is 0 and 2 to McLemore. What you want to do is just put the ball in play hard somewhere. Up to two strikes, you look for a pitch that maybe you can pull in the hole. But with two strikes, just hit it hard someplace. Yeah. Right down the middle, so McLemore heads back to the bench. That's the second strikeout for Rick Belling on a breaking ball. And Edgar Martinez again walked on four pitches in the first inning. Edgar Martinez has been on base 15 of his 17 plate appearances. Just unbelievable. Yeah, but wait till he gets hot. Ichiro looking for his first major league stolen base. See the lead that Ichiro has down there at first. Pretty good lead. Rather aggressive lead. Good four steps off the bat. I'm sure he's familiar with the man behind the plate. He's got the right. That pitch is hit to deep right center field and the tail there to make the catch. So that's good. Good wood on it. And Ruben Mateo over there. Looked like he may have gotten that a little bit toward the end of the bat. Certainly, Edgar with enough power to get one of the seats in right field may have gotten that a little bit toward the end of the bat. Takes a little high. John, a base hit. In the first. Yeah. 
This is the fourth of 19 straight against the West, against the American League West. Up the middle. Is Velarde going to get to it? He's going to knock it down. Is he going to throw to first in time? No. So Olu is two for two. Dave, they had an interesting defensive alignment that time on Olu. They had Velarde playing him dead pull hitter on the infield. Which means he had a long way to go for that ground ball, but in the outfield, Curtis was playing him like a right-handed hitter. Take a look at it again. Look how far that Velarde had to go. Made a made a great defensive play, but really didn't have a chance to get to John at first base. That throw way off the line, but played him way to pull. Cammy struck out on the breaking ball. His first uh, trip to the plate takes a fastball. Take a look at the tell at the. Uh, as you can plainly see how far that uh, Velarde is playing around with a runner at first base and now the ground ball up the middle had that far to go made a great play as we said really no chance Danny quickly in the hole two strikes and that check swing and is already with six hits against Mr. Heller. Yankees got a pretty good shot of losing their first of the year is Toronto. Hammering the Yankees nine to nothing in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Well, speaking about first of the year, this is the first road trip of the year for the Mariners, their first game away from Safeco Field. And that pitch is hit high and deep to left field and Greer goes back to the track to the wall to make the catch about 320 feet away. So Cameron got it up in that breeze but the breeze pushes that ball toward right not left. The Mariners don't score but still lead it four to nothing. Come back uh, to the ballpark in Arlington. That's the name of the of this baseball. <laughs> Rafael Palmero will lead it off and he takes a strike on the outside corner. Rafi, 36 years of age now. Off to a slow start, only one for 12. Well, this guy's had a great career. 400 home runs so far in his career, 1,347 runs driven in. This guy's put up some great numbers over the years. His second hit of the year. He drives one into left field. Pudge Rodriguez, the man who allegedly recruited uh, Alex Rodriguez more than any other man. They both live in Miami during the offseason. A little low on outside. Uh, one, one ball no strikes. Moyer has all kinds of trouble getting this guy out. But I mean, Moyer's not the only guy in the league. Dave, before this young man finishes his career, he might just well be the best catcher in the history of the game of baseball. Well, by giving Alex Rodriguez uh, that much money, $252 million, uh, this man, I'm sure, is looking longingly at the purse strings of Mr. Hicks, too. That's one thing that giving a, an athlete like Alex that kind of money. I mean, that's the trickle down effect can be enormous. Breaking ball inside. It remains to be seen what the long time effect of that will be. Well, I'm sure that when he negotiates his uh, next contract, he's going to say, you know, I've been here for a few years and look at the numbers that I've put up. 
and compare them to Alex. And that's lined into the corner down the left field line, so it's going to give Palmero at least a third if they don't try and score. And Aaron will not try and score, and he'll hold him up. And the Rangers have runners at second and third with nobody out. But the big cat. Yeah, Pudge Rodriguez, a lifetime 429 hitter against Jamie Moyer with a couple of home runs. And he uh, picks up where he left off last year. Here's Andres Galarraga now, and Galarraga takes down low and outside. Uh, the big cat who of course uh, beat cancer last year will be 40 in June his first uh, first trip around the American League you're getting used to pitching in the American League and can hit him with anybody fouls it back you know over in the National League when he first came up when he's with Montreal and all they used to jam him a great deal. As you can see, his career numbers 290, 361 home runs. They've got a great offensive ball club, 1,276 runs batted in. He is just learning to DH. I mean, it drove him crazy down in spring training the first time he didn't have to go out in the field. And Johnny Oates would like to use him at least once or twice at first base a week, and we'll probably yeah. see him. Uh, this weekend at first base and give Palmero the DH and sure. Well, that's a luxury. I mean, you've got two outstanding first basemen there, interchangeable like that. Got him on a chain, so the big cat with just a purr as he goes back to the bench. Big strikeout for Jamie Moyer, and he got him with the changeup. You can see a perfect changeup. Kept the ball down, good arm speed, and Galarraga. Fooled on it as he was way out in front. Galarraga very much aware of the fastball in on him. That's where a lot of teams like to pitch him. Hard stuff in on his hands. And I was about to say that was with Montreal. Giants used to break his bat once or twice a game, and Don Baylor taught him how to hit the ball that's inside. It's Former MVP up there now in the National League. Ken Caminiti gets a fastball and lines it foul down the left field line. Out in front just a little bit. 0 1 the count. Caminiti, a, a switch hitter. And Caminiti is going to be 38 years of age in 15 days. So they've got some, they've got some men on this ball club with Galarraga turning 40 in June. Caminiti 38. Randy Bellardi's 38 years of age. They've got some men with some age on them. A little long of tooth in the sports world and the baseball world. Another fastball that time. He started him off with a fastball and then just missed with another one. One ball and one strike. Caminiti, a 250 hitter in his career against Jamie. Two for eight. <laughs> On the inside corner. So Caminiti left his standing there, and he's just still a standing there. Gee, that's the first time this year that the Texas Rangers have had two hits in an inning. And you know that's that's going to change here soon because they've got too many guys up and down their lineup that can hit. And that pitch is hit to left field. We'll get a run in as Al Martin goes back to the warning track to make the catch. So Caminiti has a sacrifice fly, and the Rangers are on the board, and it's 4-1. Caminiti has his first Texas Ranger RBI. And that will bring up a kid that just kills the Maryland, Chad Curtis. He did when he was with the Angels. He did when he was with the Yankees. And he did last year with the Texas Rangers. He hit 370 against Jamie Moyer in his career. And sends a ground ball to the right of uh, the shortstop game. 
And Carlos throws him out. So only one run here on a couple of hits. And a man left. And after two, 4-1, Maryland. The uh, Mariners leading the Texas Rangers moving to the third and coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. It's a Northwest Sports Report. Rich Walsh goes one on one with Alex Rodriguez to break down tonight's game. And Sean Kemp checks into rehab. 30 minutes of local sports news you want to know about tonight at 10 p.m. The Northwest Sports Report right here on Fox Sports Net. Dave Niehaus along. With Ron Fairley in Arlington, Texas. Windy, but warm Arlington, Texas. It will be warm the next time we're in here. As Al Martin leads off the third and takes a strike on one. That was due for a four game series here over the 4th of July, the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of July. Three trips to each Western Division city this year. Alex Rodriguez. Has it easily and just barely gets a hustling out Martin and I mean by a half a step. So one down. Carlos Guillen aboard on the Palmero error. That allowed a run to score in the first. Elling is really settling down. He's right now throwing first pitch strike, something he was having problems with in the first inning. Cut that time by Carlos. Had that ball timed well. Looked like he's trying to hit it back up the middle. Carlos will fool you every now and then. He'll. He has the power to hit it far. But basically a line drive hitter. Two and two. Changed that time and he got away with it. It was up in his eyes. And Carlos Guillen wanted to know. And Paul Emil, if indeed that was a strike, and I think Emil nodded yes, it was. Tom Lampkin had an RBI single in the first inning. likes to try to pull the ball and the scouting report when you look at the way the Texas Rangers like to play Lampkin as he turns his back to that wind as it gusts there at home plate they like to play him to pull in the infield one one They've been like that ever since the flags have, ever since the beginning of the game. That pitch is hit to right field. That's going to be aided by the wind, and that's going to fly away, way back into the lower bleachers. So Tom Lampkin is two for two, and the Mariners have the 5 1 lead now as Lampkin has singled and homered. And up in that wind a little bit, and anything hit out that way is going to be blown into the bleachers. 
So the silver bullet blast one more time. The first for Tom Lampkin was brought to you by Coors Light. One more time. Told you that he likes to try to pull the ball. This time he got it airborne and struck the ball well. And no doubt about that as Mateo goes back, looks up, and uh, well back up into the seats. First home run of the year for Lampkin. And David Bell, who bounced into the double play to end the first, will be the hitter. That's 10 home runs that the Rangers have allowed already. And the Mariners have their first two home runs of the year here in this one. The curb low. Scouting report indicates that when Helling gets behind, you got about an 80 percent chance of getting a fastball to hit. There's there. one, and that's laced into center field. You're right. Fastball and struck well. So already eight hits for the Mariners in two and two thirds innings. And that's going to get him stirring around in the Texas Ranger bullpen here early in this ball game. Well, that's the second time they've had the guys up. I believe that's the second time that uh, Pat Mahomes has been up. Bobby Cuellar, remember him? Used to be the Mariner pitching coach. Breaking ball for a strike on the inside corner. Pitching coach in Montreal the last several years, native Texan. <laughs> Ichiro fans down here in Big D. Ball foul on the third baseline. Ichiro, a line shot into left field for a double. A line drive to center field for a single. Curveball and the ground ball toward the hole, but Velarde there to plug it up and the throw to first just does get Ichiro. So here in the third, a long ball from Tom Lampkin and a man left. And as we go to the bottom of the third, it'll be Mateo, Greer, Velarde, if any, the three get aboard, A Rod. Mariners up five to one. The Mariners as we go to the bottom half of the third. The first BECU half price family night presented by KBSG Oldies 97.3 is coming up Monday, April the 16th. Mariners taking on these Texas Rangers, and of course, it's the return of A Rod. You can be there at great discount. All of you reserve seats are available on a half price basis, just $7.50. You can call 4662 or stop by any Mariners team store. 1 and 0 the count on Ruben Mateo, one of the brilliant youngsters in the Rangers' plan for the future. He broke his right leg last June the second and never played another inning. And Mateo takes inside. Ball two, two balls and one strike to count. And to have a steel rod inserted into his leg. And he was out the rest of the year. Just 23 years old from the Dominican Republic. Wide at third, David Bell makes a classy play and throws him out. A scrambling, spin-around move by David Bell. 
you know one thing that David Bell can do and everybody knows he's an excellent feeling third baseman but look how quickly David gets to his feet bang down he goes and then just pops right back up and then shifts the feet so that he's in position to make the throw to Oluru. boy that was a good play Rusty Greer takes a strike. Oh, and one. Right there again. This time, we're not anywhere near Salah here. Mighty close, but away. Two and two. Greer has a good eye. I think that's one of the reasons why he's been rough on Jamie Moyer. One of the assets that Jamie has, and that is to get the batters to swing at pitches a little bit out of the strike zone. Lofted to left field toward the corner, but back into the stand. This a very big night in Mariner history. And certainly in my life, too, 25 years ago. Tonight, the Mariners played their first game ever against the Angels at the Kingdom. And Frank Tanana shut him out seven to nothing. Nolan Ryan shut him out the next time. That's and a pretty good combo. They didn't want their score a run in the 77 season. And they won the third game. The left field. And right out, Al Martin. And you're a real Mariner fan if you can remember the winning pitcher, first Mariner victory. 25 years ago, the third game. Bill Laxton, a left hander out of the Detroit Tiger organization. Here's Randy Velarde. Strike on the inside corner. What a chance. Wiley Veveran is up to his old tricks, isn't he, Red? Yes, he is. Jamie hasn't uh, hasn't changed his style of pitching. Throw just enough fastballs to make the hitter uh, look for that pitch, and then throw them the change up and have them way out in front. And then get him thinking about the change up, and then throw the fastball right in on the hands and break the bat. Brian Price, the Mariner pitching coach. Resting rather easily right now, as is Lou. A change in the ground ball as a bat is thrown at the ball, and Guillen throws him out. So that's six in a row retired now by Jamie Moyer. And as we go to the fourth inning of play with McLemore, Edgar, and Olerud do up, it's still 5 1. The one as we go to the fourth inning of play, and they, they got up two to nothing in a hurry in the first inning as McLemore. Hit a line drive over the 407 sign right out near the Texas Rangers uh, bullpen. And that, that got uh, the Mariners up two to nothing because Ichiro had let off the game with a double. And the Mariners tacked on two more, and then they got the home run from Tommy Lampkin. And now we go to the four. So Mac is one for two. Getting his first starting assignment uh, today. <laughs> Twice the bullpen has been up behind Rick Helen. That's ground ball five. See the home runs hit uh, last year by the Mariners at home. They hit 92 home runs. Just a few more than that uh, on the road and. Uh, that's the way it has. Looks like it's going to be again this year. Not hit a home run the, on the home stand with the 
He whacked a couple here this evening so far. But you can see that that total was 198 home runs, and there is no way that you can predict that for the Mariners this year. As a matter of fact, had they hit two more home runs, it would become the first club in Major League history to hit 200 or more home runs five consecutive years. But you subtract Alex's 42. And yeah, who's going to pick up the 42? <laughs> and Buehner are out of there hurt now. That's not how many you hit, it's when you hit them. That's right. And really, not even if you hit them. You need home runs to win ball games. That's ball four. So a leadoff base on balls. That's the third walk issued by Helling. Mariners have the leadoff man aboard with the big boys coming up. See if they can get some more runs out of this. Edgar hit the ball kind of off the end of the bat into right center field fairly deep. And he walked and scored. There's the high strike as Edgar bends away from it. Off speed pitch. Pat Mahomes for the third time gets up. Just fair down the left field line into the corner. So Edgar's got another base hit to third base McLemore. He'll hold up as Edgar coasts into second base. The amazing hitting machine is at it one more time. Just a bullet down the third base line and left field line. Dave, he's now nine for 12. <laughs> and I was kidding with Edgar before the game. I said, yeah, you know, coming in the game, you're eight for 10. I said, now don't get discouraged. You know, you're, you're liable to get hot one of these days. But look at it one more time. He just rips this ball right on past Caminiti. Solid base hit. Clearly fair by half a dozen feet or so. But look at this batting average in the American League. Edgar's only batting 750. Clark 625. Ortiz, Stewart, and then Steve. Yeah, they got some guys that are starting the season hot with a bat. I'd put a smile on my face too if I was hitting 750. Well, Johnny Oates has seen enough of Helling tonight, and uh, he's going to go down and get uh, Pat Mahomes to deal with uh, John Olaru as the Mariners runners in scoring position, and they started out hitting with the leadoff man Ichiro, and they haven't stopped already. Nine hits against Helling, so the change will be made. Here comes the ex-Minnesota twin, Pat Mahomes, and we'll take this timeout. Right now, in time for our Aflac trivia question, brought to you by Aff the Duck. If we had it, All right, the question is: Thank you. Which pitcher holds the Ranger record for highest winning percentage with Texas, and that's a minimum 50 decisions. You know, some people said about this Ranger staff coming in, it was Rogers and Helling, and then three days of Shelling, <laughs> and uh, that Shelling has started with Helling. Actually, he is done. Pat Mahomes takes over, and uh, Rick Helling in the dugout. Well, one time 20 game winner, you always like to get off to a good start. Uh, he gave up a couple of pop fly home runs on Sunday against the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I saw one of them and there in Puerto Rico. I haven't been in that stadium before. Just a pop up to left field is a home run. He gave up two of them and suffered the loss in that game to the Toronto Blue Jays. And now, of course, he's on the hook. You never like to start out the season 0 and 2 because you start thinking a little negatively, perhaps. But. Uh, He's down, uh, and unless uh, the Rangers can score a bunch of runs and come from behind, he's on the hook tonight. John Olerud will step in now against Pat Mahomes, who was hit on the forearm on a shot to off the bat of Benji Molina in the uh, sixth inning on Wednesday night. And Olerud sends a high fly ball deep enough to get a run home. And over there, sliding to backhand the ball and dropping it is Curtis. So the Mariners will score one, and they'll replace Mr. Edgar Martinez down at second base with John Olerud. See how they score that. Looked like the center fielder Curtis got a glove on it, but that wind may have been playing some funny tricks on the ball. And that ball finally comes out of his glove. Let's take a look at it again. Does he really have a... A shot at that ball? No, you he know never what? Touched he it. never touched it. So I've, I've got to give, uh, I've got to give Olerud a double. Absolutely. 
Look at it again. We well, really couldn't tell on that uh, particular shot, but it didn't look like he got a glove on it. Well, Mike Cameron is the hitter, and Cammy has had all kinds of chances tonight to drive in runs. Up there with the uh, runners at first and third in the first inning, struck out, and then he was the third out in the second with runners at first and second. One on one. Mahomes has some size to him, Dave. 6'4, weighs 212 pounds. On the corner. Good pitch with that slider that time by Mahomes. Mahomes last year. Out in the Yankee bullpen. One and two. Signed as a free agent. Is hit into right center field. Should get Edgar home. There is Greer. Here comes Edgar. The throw goes to Alex. And just like that, Mike Cameron does deliver with a sacrifice fly to right center field. Good hitting by Cameron. Pick up his second RBI of the season. And now we can close the book on Rick Helling. Give you the numbers for Helling in tonight's game, as you can see. As he went uh, three plus innings. And the hits, the runs. Walks and strike out 74 pitches. Now Martin. A little on inside, ball one. That time. Mahomes is a, a native Texas son, born in Bryan, Texas, makes his home in Lindale, Texas. 30. Behind Mark. Mark, is that a fair ball? It is a fair ball picked up by Pud. Had to grab that ball in a hurry. It had so much spin on it, it was going to roll back over the first base foul line. Yeah, he managed to get it just before it rolled foul. Yeah, if he gets his hands up, you know he's going to throw you out. You can see the little tapper that ball hits and just the back spin to it. Pudge almost dropped that ball, almost came out of his glove. So here's Gian now. Side corner for a strike, 0 and 1. And that pitch is hit to deep right field, but Mateo going over and Ruben on the run. So the Mariners settle for the two more that they pick up here in the fourth on. A couple of doubles, one by Edgar Martinez, one by John Olerud, and one on a sacrifice fly, and now lead it seven to one. One lead going to the bottom of the fourth. Answer time for the athletic trivia. What Ranger pitcher has the highest winning percentage with Texas? Minimum 50 decisions. And it's Aaron Seeley, ladies and gentlemen.
a 6-4-9 winning percentage, 37 and 20 record as a Texas Ranger. Dave, in this ballpark, it's enclosed, and, and it's the obviously the wind has to come over the top of it. If, if this were in the old ballpark, what uh, what type of night would we be having? Same just, type? Yeah, just about the same type. Uh, they they did enclose it out there in center field, but uh, originally when Texas got the franchise and moved here from Washington D.C. They were the old Washington Senators. They didn't have the center field uh, backdrop. It was not completely enclosed, and it was a notoriously tough ballpark to hit home runs out to right field. If they flew out to left field. I remember there was a Mike Epstein complaining so much that that he couldn't hit a ball out to right field. It's always going out toward left. But when they enclosed, it was just the opposite. Just like tonight, the cyclonic effect uh, as Alex Rodriguez fouls the back. So it's be about the same. Well, I tell you what, if in the old ballpark uh, that I recall, the ball that McLemore hit would have been caught for an easy out. The yeah. ball that Lampkin hit would have been an easy out. Uh, score would not be what it is today. The ball that Cameron hit down the line had a chance to go, although it might have might have gone foul. A Rod quickly with two strikes on him against Jamie Moyer now, and yeah, down he goes on a change. Give you an idea of how A Rod has moved up in the world. Alex. Uh, lives in a place called Highland Park. He bought five acres there and he bought an old mansion 1859 mansion uh, just a year before the, the Civil War and he doesn't know whether to tear it down or to restore it. If he's going to put up a new place he hasn't made his mind up. But his neighbors include Jerry Jones the owner of the Dallas Cowboys Ross Perot Jr. and Lamar Hunt the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs and the name of the street fits Alex Rodriguez perfect. He lives on Straight Street. And if there's ever a street for Alex Rodriguez it is Straight Street. But I'm going to tell you it's not spelled S T R A I G H T it's spelled S T R A I T. But still Straight Street for him is right where he belongs I think. He's a straight guy. I think baseball's been pretty good to Alex. <laughs> and you know what? He did a very nice gesture when we arrived here, Dave. Uh, I thought uh, the little note that uh, Alex left uh, left us that uh, showed a lot of class. Palmero has a count go to two one. Absolutely. A little thank you note that Alex left uh, for uh, us up here in the booth. And a nice little uh, a little package uh, of assorted uh, things to, to munch on, but uh, nicely done and a very nice gesture in the on Alex's behalf. Tom Merrill's putting this right back below. Us. We have a play. If we had the old Harry Carey net. We could have gotten that one. Right? I might have been able to reach out and catch that. I break your fingers. <laughs> but then again, <laughs> that's beyond my range now. Catch it only in self defense. Hey, Ron. Yes, sir. Speaking of range, you had great range today on my television in the hotel room. Did you know you were on today? No. Turn the television on, and there's Ron Fairley in the old Woolies back in 1965. They were replaying game one of the 65 World Series. Minnesota Twins. I always thought you were a first baseman, but in game one, you were in right field. That is true. And and Vin Scully, as he panned through the outfield, he said, and there's Ron Fairley in right field. Good range <laughs> for that left hander. <laughs> yeah, we got beat that uh, the, the opening game of that series. Uh, Don Drysdale started and uh, the twins uh, jumped on us pretty good. I think they beat us like five to two something like that the the first game. Maybe more than that. Todd Rodriguez fouls it at the plate with Palmero at first base. And you know one of the fun things Ron is back then when the World Series was played they took the announcer from each team mm -hmm. and they did the game and it, it, I don't think there's ever been a, a starker contrast than Vin Scully. His, uh, his melodic tones and Ray Scott. <laughs> Ray, Ray Scott, I, I, t I tell you what, I love the way that Ray Scott would announce the football game you know, for so many years for the, the Green Bay Packers. That's foul. That on top of a little bit 
too much. You know, in my in my mind, I can still hear Ray Scott doing a a Green Bay Packers game where he'd say star back, dollar open, touchdown Green Bay, and that was about about it right there. But you knew everything that was going on in the field. Jamie's fastball popped up. Who's got it? All the wood does. Yes. Two away. Ron, to finish the story, you didn't have a good game one, apparently, from watching you today, but you did have a very good series, and you guys won it in seven games. Well, I hit a home run in the first game. Well, yeah. Well, but the that team was late. Well, <laughs> it was it? Well, no, no, it was in the second inning. Well, I, I turned it off after the first. Oh. <laughs> I had to get to the yard. Heck of a ball game, huh? <laughs> but you had a good say. Mudcat Grant was the guy that you had, yeah. had did the damage against that. Yeah, against Mudcat. Dalaraga. A strikeout victim in the second. Went seven games in that World Series. Had to win the final game there in uh, Minnesota at the old Met. Twins had a heck of a ball club. Oh, did they have it? Broken back, fly ball, and Cameron's going to have to play it on a hop. So Galarraga sends Palmero down to second base. Well, don't forget, we've got more baseball for you coming up on Sunday because the Mariners and the Rangers are going to wrap it up on Sunday afternoon and you can be here as part of the show. It all starts here on Fox Sports Net at noon on Sunday. Ken Caminiti. Drove in the only run for Texas in the second with a sacrifice fly to left field. Caminiti is a natural right-handed hitter, as most switch hitters are. He really has to work on his stroke left-handed. in favor today, said, I know Rafael Palmero, but I'll get the job done from the left-hand side. I got the inside corner. Playable, and then uh, the wind got it. Look at anything hit to left field that wind will have a tendency to knock it down or push it towards the stands. But you hit that ball to right field, and it'll push it towards the seats in right field. That wind kind of swirls around here at the ballpark. I think that the, the pressure's on uh, the venerable skipper of the Texas Rangers, Johnny Oates, this year. And all the money expended. Look at that win, get that yeah. ball. And it comes back, and it almost blew it away from Lampkin. But he leans back just far enough. What a night for pop-ups down here in Arlington, Texas. No runs a hit, two left. And still after four, Mariners up, seven to one. To the fifth inning, and Tom Lampkin, who's had an interesting night behind the plate trying to catch pop ups, but a big night at the bat will lead it off here in the fifth inning. Lampkin's first home run of the year coming in the third inning after a base hit in the first, so he is perfect. He is 
two for two. He got it up in that jet stream. And now he faces Pat Mahomes for the first time. Changed way outside. Ball one. One ball and a strike. I think the teams that have seen Lampkin swing the bat do not like to throw him a lot of fastballs that are out over the plate because he'll go out there and hook the ball like he did the last time up. Likes to hit the fastball. Palmero stays with it nicely and throws a strike to Mahomes. That last swing was a perfect example of fastball out of the plate. And all Lampkin did was top it that time and that hitting that ground ball to Palmero. But look at the swing one more time. As you can see Lampkin going out there, you can see him hook that top hand roll over, hit the ball hard on the ground. Good play by Palmero. David Bell hit one right on the sweet spot to center field for a base hit. After bouncing into a double play in the first, so he's one for two. His daddy, a legend down here, of course, for years, the third baseman with the Texas Rangers, and David basically grew up down here in Arlington, Texas. David with a, a big double in the sixth inning against the A's in the game a couple of days ago. That helped break open uh, that ball game against Gil Heredia. That was the game, of course, on Wednesday. Game which the Mariners eventually scored seven runs in the inning. Two and two. The A's played here last night. And not the A's, but the Angels played here last night, and then they flew into Oakland where they're opening up a series over the weekend. This game number four of 19 straight against the West. Jandy that time. Should be an adventure a little bit with the wind taking care of it, but staying with it nicely is below. Two in the mud. Ichiro wearing that guard over his left elbow. That's right. Remember when Colorado was with the Braves, that huge guard that he used to wear? And he's had to cut that down. And only 10 inches this year. One ball and one strike. The guy that had the big one, though, I thought Move was on. Move on. He'll have to cut his down when he comes back, too. He'll have to cut it in half. Ichiro hits a fly ball to left field, and Greer moves over to make the catch, and that will take care of the fifth inning. One, two, three. The Mariners gone in order for the first time in the ball game. They lead it seven. Brought to you by Affleck. Without it, no insurance is complete. By Henry Weinhardt's. Beer means more here. And by Money Tree, your cash solution. A windy night here in Texas. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Chad Curtis leads it off and takes a look at ball one. Mariners lead the Rangers by a score of 7-1. to one. Hi again, everybody. Rick Riz along with Ron Fairley. Red, this wind causing havoc for everybody. Yeah, you got to nail things down here this <laughs> evening. They got uh, winds that gust up to maybe 30, 35 miles an hour. They continue to blow in from right field. Ball two, two and zero. The count of Curtis, but Red <laughs> offensively, the Mariners jump on Rick Kelly right away with that four spot in the first inning and play a little add on, and that's what Luce talked about his offense having to do this year. Well, that's the, the one thing that Lou has stressed a great deal in spring training. Go ahead and uh, see if you can't do a little bit of adding on to the runs that you score. And Moyer said, you know, anytime you guys want to score some runs for me, you go right ahead. Because I was talking with Jamie before the game, and I touched on it very briefly. I said, what's the best thing in the world that uh, your team can do for you when you're on the road? And he says, go out and score at least one run in the very first inning. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that way... It takes the pressure off of the pitcher and that he, he doesn't have to say I, I have to make a good pitch to every single hitter yeah. that comes to plate. So when you score four runs like 
the Mariners have here this evening in the very first inning. It allows Jamie to make a mistake or two and maybe get away with something as you look at the numbers for Jamie. Four plus innings so far, just 69 pitches. Walked a couple, but uh, then again, uh, you're facing a very good hitting ball club in this Texas club. Worked out of a few jams. Here is right fielder Ruben Mateo. Robbed of a base hit by David Bell his last time up. David made an outstanding play, diving to his left to take away a hit from Mateo in the third. Ball one. Jamie Moyer, an ex Ranger, originally came up with the Chicago Cubs, spent a little time in Texas. Seven runs on ten hits, no errors. Rangers one run, just three hits in the ball game, and one error. All two, two balls and no strikes. Rangers very high in this young man. Young man out of the Dominican Republic, just 23 years of age. All the way behind the plate, two and one. The Rangers last year Red had a lot of injuries. Ruben Mateo, this young man right here, broke his leg, missed most of last year. Bud Rodriguez, the broken thumb, out for a long time. Justin Thompson, Dr. Justin Thompson, who put a ball game today, may be back after the All Star break, possibly. Rusty Greer was hurt. Down ball to third. David Bell, down to McLemore, on to Olerud. Double play. Wow, nicely turned by Bell and McLemore, and a nice play also by Olerud. Absolutely, and Mateo runs well. So David Bell had to get rid of the ball in a hurry, as did McLemore. Take a look at it again. As you can see, the ball hit hard down there at third base. Bell made a good play. On to McLemore, and fires on to Olerud, and Big John reaching out there with this nice grab of that pitch. 5-4-3 double play, so two outs, and here's left fielder Rusty Greer. Mariners are very fortunate. They have McLemore and they have Boone, both of which can turn the double play as well as any second baseman in the league. All the way up the first base side. Better than most, I should say. Luke Canella going with the veteran McLemore today. He said basically for two reasons. Number one, he needs to get his veteran bat. He sure he a chance to play some, so everybody's ready to go later on in the year in September. Number two, he had a lot of success coming into the ballgame against tonight's starter, Rick Kelly. First at bat, boom, a two run home run to right center. Well, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that on in the game on Sunday that you might see Javier play first base. But you've got to allow uh, McLemore to play. Line drive, base center to left field for Rusty Greer. So one aboard for the Rangers with two outs here in the fifth. Say, friends, coming up after the game, it's Mariners wrap up. Rehash the game with all the highlights and analysis from analysis from our team of reporters. Stay tuned after the ball game for Mariners wrap up right here on Fox Sports Net. And a lot to talk about tonight after the game. Mariners first look at Alex Rodriguez with his new ball club, the Rangers. The pitching right now, Jamie Moyer, Andy Velarde. Takes a look at ball one. Red at spring training. Jamie Moyer was one of the few starting pitchers to go six innings. Lou had a lot of pitchers to look at in spring training, a lot of guys to get ready for the season. Fly ball, right field. Each hero is there to make the catch, and that's it for Texas. And after five innings of play, it's the Mariners seven, the Rangers one. Seattle Mariners baseball is brought to you by Napa. Napa Auto Parts. Get it done right the first time. Go see the Napa Pros today by 76. Fill up with 76 Pro Power. Available at 76 and participating Circle K locations. By Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's Improving Home Improvement. And by Coors Light. Naturally brewed. Reach for the silver bullet. The pure taste of the Rockies. Top of the sixth inning, and second base for Mark McLemore. Reach off for the Mariners. Strike going one. Mariners lead Texas by a score of seven to one. Fly ball into left field. Greer getting back in plenty of time, and Rusty makes a catch. One away.
Well, here's a look at the pitching matchups coming up tomorrow, brought to you by AT&T Broadband, the Northwest premier provider of TV, internet, and phone services. It's going to be Brett Tomko ran against Doug Davis. Tomko, in his first outing of the year, was in, worked in uh, relief and uh, pitched uh, scoreless innings, uh, coming in in the game that Freddie Garcia started. The opening uh, game against the A's, and boy, he did a heck of a job, oh, yeah. and will be filling in in the rotation in place of Paul Abbott until Abbott finally gets his arm and everything all taken care of. So top go against Davis tomorrow night in game two of the series. And how about this guy right here the hottest hitter in all of baseball Edgar Martinez. Fastball a strike from the homes and the count rushes the 0 and 2. Edgar one for two tonight with a double. He's walked and scored flat out to right. Came into the ball game hitting 800. Just a bit outside, one and two. Well, they were talking in the papers uh, today about Edgar Martinez. A career 333 average against uh, the Texas Rangers. That's third best uh, uh, against uh, the Texas Rangers of anybody else in the league. Ground ball out to Velarde at second base. So two down for the Mariners here in the top half of the sixth. And to go along with that 333 average, 19 home runs, 90 runs driven in against the Texas Rangers. That's Man, seventh best among all the active players today. And so, yeah, when uh, Edgar comes to town, believe me, the Texas Rangers are well aware of it. And yeah, they take notice. Edgar Martinez off to a super, super, super stuff. Here's John Olderwood. Oh, and one. Holderwood very quietly having another good night. He's three for three. A run batted in. He has five already for the year. Checks way. Didn't go. They field down to the third base umpire, Mike DeMuro, and the count is even on John. And one ball and one strike. Rangers last night lost at home to the Angels by a score of 10 to 3. By ball, right field. Mateo is there and makes a catch for out number three. No runs, no hits, no airs, no buddy left on. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning here in Texas on a windy night. Mariners lead the Rangers seven to one. It's the Mariners seven and the Texas Rangers one bottom half of the sixth inning and shortstop Alex Rodriguez will lead things off. Jamie Moyer has pitched very well tonight. Starts a right off with a strike going one. And red. Jamie got out in front of the count at Alex's last time up 0-2. He had to know that circle change was coming, and he still chased it down in the way. I, I know, and, and uh, you stand in that batter's box, and you keep saying in the back of your mind, yeah, but he might throw me a fastball, and hitters do not want to get jammed. That's the one thing hitters do not want to do, and so you're always aware of the fastball, and yet that changeup continues to get guys out in front. Line drive, base in into left field. They ride with a leadoff single. Here at the bottom of the six, and it's going to be strange for Alex to go up against his former teammates for the first time. Let's check in with uh, Rich Waltz on the uh, swing by John Olderoot in the top half of the six. Yeah, Red, you were talking about not wanting to get jammed, and I think that's what happened to John Olderoot. Watch the swing first, but take a look at what happens as John moves up the line. I don't know if he's holding the rib or the wrist, but he got jammed, and something didn't feel right after that swing. We'll keep an eye on him next time he comes to the plate. So he reaches around with that right arm. Hopefully John is okay and here's Rafael Palmero. All one. Don't want to get jammed. He'll end up with sore thumbs. Palmero one for one with a single run scored and a walk. One and one to count. Palmero has such a smooth stroke. Seems like he's never fooled on pitches. Never out in front, never behind in pitches. Has a great approach. Line drive down the right field line. It's going to be a fair ball into the corner. A Rod heading for third. Extra bases for Palmero. A Rod being waved in. Each row is thrown to the plate. is cut off by Olerud. No relay home. An RBI double for Palmero. Seven, the Rangers two. Raphael 
his third RBI of the season. And you don't want to open up the door for this ball club. No, the Texas Rangers are still very much in this game. But there it is once again, Palmero going out and uh, pulling that ball into the right field corner. And of course, we have seen the speed of Alex Rodriguez for so many years that that ball did not carry him really right away to each year old. And Alex able to score easily from the first base. But this Texas Ranger can explode on you in a hurry. Too many guys in the lineup capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. There's another one of those guys, catcher Yvonne Rodriguez, inside with a fastball, ball one. This guy here, lifetime, just wears out. Jamie Moore doubled in the second inning. Seemed like he just doesn't have a pitch to get this guy out. Watch a double tonight down the left field line. He has popped up all the way to first base. This guy is also one of the better bad ball hitters, Red. No matter where it is, he seems to be able to hit it hard. Yeah, I mean this guy puts the puts the ball in play hard, I think more than anybody else in the league. Strike up and in on points. Didn't like the call by Mr. Evel. This guy and Edgar Martinez, it's amazing how many times a year they'll hit the ball hard somewhere. But he's a good off speed hitter, good breaking ball hitter, and he's very quick up there at the plate. So it's tough to throw the fastball by. There's that high strike that we're going to see this year called by home plate umpire Paul Emble. One on, nobody out or run in. Up and in again. This time it is ball two. <laughs> Punch looked back at Paul Emble, the plate umpire said, it was up. <laughs> was that a strike too? Two and one. Skip the loop and on your left and put your coach Brian Price on your right. Jamie Moyer with a five run lead. Seven to two. Ball three. Three and one to count. The Rangers had a chance, chance to do a lot of damage in the second, but Jamie Moyer gave up only one run after a leadoff single and a double by Palmero and Rodriguez. Ivan Rodriguez got out of a jam in the fourth. Up and away, ball four. So Punch Rodriguez with a walk. Third walk given up by Jamie. Rangers have runners at first and second. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning, but now the double play is in order. And here's designated hitter Andres Galarragas. You see Brian Price on the phone down to the bullpen with Jeff Nelson. He's warming up. Side call, Tom Lampkin out to the bottom. And here comes Lou Pinnell out of the dugout. And Lou's going to go out and find out if Jamie Moyer still has anything in that tank left. Well, he's right around 90 pitches, 91 pitches so far in the game. And so Lou just wants to go out, this being Jamie's first start of the year. And wants to know just how he feels is because Jamie's starting to get up with uh, his pitches, and that's yeah. the first indication that he might be starting to get a little tired. So Jamie goes just to five innings, and uh, Lou uh, decides that they're going to go to the bullpen, and Lou will not be afraid to go to the bullpen with the staff that he has down there this year. So Jeff Nelson, on in relief, will take over with runners at first and second and a run in. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Mariners lead by a score of 7 to 2. We'll be back after this timeout. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning here in Texas where the Mariners are leading the Rangers by a score of 7 to 2. Let's take a look at the home run leaders brought to you by Home Depot. And I'll tell you what, these guys I think the baseball looks as big as that uh, full moon out tonight over Texas. And Carlos Delgado with two more home runs today, Red. Isn't that amazing? He already has five, and the uh, season is just getting underway. He had three home runs two days ago. Luis Gonzalez, Ray Langford, Richard Hidalgo, Chris Truby of Houston, each have three. The new pitcher for the Mariners, big right-hander Jeff Nelson. You look at the numbers on Jeff Nelson, a career against the Texas Rangers. He's 3-1, and 2.83 ERA. Last year, appeared in five and two thirds innings and his ERA was zero. They had a little blurb on uh, Jeff Nelson in the papers down here in Arlington that when he comes to town the teams it's amazing how many times the opposing team beats the Texas Rangers on the team that Jeff Nelson is playing for. 
of course the last few years with the with the Yankees and now here he is with the Mariners but here's a guy that is very very tough on the Rangers and that's probably the reason why Lou brings him in the ball game here in the sixth inning he Lou wants to get out of this inning he wants to keep the damage to a minimum here in the sixth inning he didn't want the Rangers to get back in this game here's Andres Galarraga one for two tonight with a bloop single to right center Low outside ball one the Rangers have Yvonne Rodriguez at first base Rafael Palmeiro's on at second a rod scored he went off the end with a single and scored on the double by Palmeiro as you take a look at the runners. Just Galarragi in the American League after spending the last 15 seasons in the National League. Brown ball to third. Bell's got it down to second. There's one relay by McLemore. In time, double play. David Bell starts another 5 4 3 twin killing. They get Yvonne Rodriguez at second and double up Galarraga at first base. Heads up play by Bell. Very good play by David Bell. You see Galarraga reaching for that pitch somewhat that's out over the plate. And uh, the old veteran unable to beat this out. But you see McLemore turning that double play down there at second. Just in time. A half a stride to get Galarraga. John Olerud with the reach in time to get the relay from McLemore. So run around at third and two outs for Ken Caminiti. Switch hitter now batting from the left side. A slider for a strike. 0 oh and 1. Kind of looks like to me Jeff Nelson can get his breaking ball over in his sleep. He probably close his eyes and throw a <laughs> curveball for a strike. It's tough on left-handers as well. Good fastball for strike two, and it's 0-2 on Caminiti. The starter, Jamie Moyer, tonight. Going five plus. Six hits, two runs, walks three, strikes out three, 91 pitches. Good outing for Jamie in his first start of the year. Leaves the ball game with a five-run lead. In one ball and two strikes. The strength of this ball club is down there in the bullpen. The addition of Jeff Nelson, who spent the last five years as a Yankee, leading the Yankees to four World Series titles. He said, My four girls each have a ring. Now I want one. I hope he gets it. And that's why he came back to Seattle, back home to Seattle, to get another one. Inside backs Caminiti off the plate, two and two. Mariners lead 72, two outs here in the sixth. Rangers hope that they can keep this veteran guy healthy all season long. He's had his problems with injuries. Strike three called, got him looking. Jeff Nelson strikes out Ken Caminiti. Great job by Nelly in relief with a double play and a strikeout that doesn't get any better than that. After six innings of play, Mariners lead Texas. Seven to two. Mariners leading Texas seven to two as we go to the top half of any number seven time now for the Pennzoil protection play brought to you by Pennzoil. As we take a look at Mike Cameron leading off the seventh inning and he takes a look at ball one. Mike Cameron is 0 for two but has a run batted in with a sacrifice fly in the fourth inning. Third, Caminiti. Toss across. Lopa dug out by Palmero. One away. All right, here's our Pennzoil protection play. Two outs, a man on, and two strikes on Caminiti, Red. Well, he just got uh, Galarraga to hit into a double play, and now this breaking ball catches the outside corner. Jeff knew it all the way. And he leaves Caminiti just standing at home plate. That is great relief work by Jeff Nelson. Backdoor slider. And Caminiti caught looking for the final out of the bottom of the sixth inning. Al Martin takes a pitch outside, ball one. Great move by Lou Pinella to bring in Jeff Nelson. Normally you bring you don't bring Jeff Nelson into the sixth inning. You generally see him seventh or eighth inning, but you don't see him in the sixth inning very often. Round ball out to Palmero to backhand it. Get a toss to Mahomes at the bag, two outs. And a lot of times we'll see Lou uh, make that move because maybe the save situation is coming there in the uh, sixth inning or or the seventh and he wants the big guy to come in. Well Lou, Lou I, 
I think very honestly said hey I've got to figure out a way to get out of this inning because I've got yeah. I have nobody out and I've got I've got guys coming to the plate that can hurt me that can hurt the ball club with uh, one one swing mm -hmm. can get the Texas Rangers back into the ball game. well as it turns out shuts the door on them they score only one run in the inning the Mariners now still have that five run lead and they have the opportunity here in this half of the inning to add to that five run lead. Carlos Guillen. A swing and a miss on one. See, that's the, to me, that's a sign of, of a good manager of knowing when to bring in a relief pitcher to shut down the other ball club if you can. And Lou, I think, right here, picked the right time to do it. And now he got the job done, a double play ball and a strikeout. Carlos Guillen, 0 for 3. You know, last year the Mariners, when they started road trips, had a horrible record. Yeah. Last year, the first game of a road trip, they were one and eleven. Trying to change that this year, Red. We've got a chance for a foul ball. No, it's right in front of us. Two and two. The count on Carlos Guillen. You know, talking about relief work. How about the job of Mr. Pat Mahomes tonight? For Texas. Rick Helling had all kinds of problems. The starter tonight for the Rangers going three plus innings. He gave up all seven runs. Mahomes has been outstanding. All the way inside the Ranger dugout, still two and two on Carlos Dean. There's a look at the line for Rick Helling. That is not a normal Rick Helling type of a line for him. Last year was three and zero against the Mariners. But they jumped on him this year. 74 pitches, three plus innings, and they scored seven runs and bang out nine hits. Down the left field line, Rusty Greer on the run. This one is going to be a foul ball, just foul down the line, and it's still two and two. Just a, another quick note on Rick Ellingred. Over the last three years, he's been one of the more successful pitchers in the American League, going 49. And 31. He's had success uh, yes, coming he. back with Texas for the second time. I'm swinging, and that will retire the side. Fans here in Texas will take their seventh inning stretch after six and a half. Mariners lead the Rangers seven to two. Seventh inning stretch is brought to you all season long by today's manufactured homes built for living, built for life. Bottom of the seventh here at the ballpark in Arlington on a windy, windy night. Mariners lead Texas 7 to 2. Chad Curtis leads it off. Jeff Nelson back to the mound for another inning of work. We'll be facing the eight, nine, and leadoff hitters here in the inning. Really outstanding to get three outs. In the sixth inning on a double play ball and a strikeout. Chad Curtis is all for one, has bounced a short and walk. Here we talk about how hitters like to go to certain ballparks to hit in, and they do hit well. Uh -huh. I've got to think this is a ballpark that Jeff Nelson likes to pitch in because he has done so well down here against the Rangers. This is a good hitter's ballpark. Ball two. Two balls in a strike. Well, right hand hitters don't really find Jeff Nelson a bundle of fun because uh, Nelly's got that, that big bending breaking ball that he has and then runs a fastball in their hands. It'd be awfully tough. There's, There's that slider. Woo. There's that breaking ball. Two and two. Man. That ball takes a U turn as it gets up to home plate. What a pitch. Curtis has had success against Jeff. Full count. Strong bullpen from last year gets even stronger with the addition of a Jeff Nelson. Wow, what a pitch. Strike three called a 3 2 slider, and it gets Curtis looking. One out for Texas here in the seventh inning. Hmm. Well, I tell you, when you can get a 3 2 curveball over the plate as consistently as Jeff Nelson does, you're going to get a lot of strikeouts. 3 2 pitch up by so many runs, that's right down the heart of the plate. And you can see 
Look at that. On his heels. And he knew exactly he was, that that was a strike. And uh, no complaint. No complaint whatsoever. Here's Ruben Mateo. Ball one. He's over two. Robbed on a great play by David Bell back in the third inning. Ball two. Pitcher that that helps them to be as, as good as they are, and that is the ability to get a breaking ball over when you're behind to the count. Hitters look for a fastball to hit when they have the count in their favor. We talk about that when the Oakland club was in, in town, getting fastball counts. Another one fouled away. The count is even on Mateo. Two balls and two strikes. That's I think what makes the A's a good hitting team. They they, they try to negotiate with a hit with a pitcher, yeah. a fastball count, and hopes to get a fastball. And pitchers keep throwing them fastballs and they keep whacking it. Fastball fouled away. But you see, by getting that curveball over not only to Caminetti, but to Curtis, now you get down to a 2 2 count. And what's the hitter going to look for? He can't look for any one particular pitch. And so now when the fastball does show up, Mateo is just lucky to get a piece of it. I mean, he's fighting that ball off. So right now, he's hitting very defensively. Uh, good one, some fastball in, and that got him on the back. Way up and in. Ruben Mateo hit by Jeff Nelson, and Ruben's out at first base. Here again is that uh, last pitch to Ruben Mateo. Up and in, listening right here. Sounds like that got some meat. One on and one away. There's a left field to Rusty Greer. Ball one. And time is called. Lampkin out to the mound. Have a quick talk to Nelly. One on and one away. Here's a look at the pitching matchups coming up on Sunday. Brought to you by AT&T Broadband, the Northwest premier provider of TV, Internet, and phone services. Freddie Garcia against Kenny Rogers, right? That's going to be a good matchup. Freddie did not have a real good outing in his first outing, and uh, I think he's anxious to get back on the mound. Going three and two-thirds innings and opening night against Oakland, but the bullpen a fabulous job. Brett Tapko, three yep. and two-thirds innings. Rusty Greer made a great catch in last night's ball game against the Angels as now he goes to first base. That win not blowing quite as hard as it is tonight. It's blowing last night as well, and Rusty Greer was all over the place, stayed with it, made a great catch. Ball two, two and one. Five balls, pop-ups, quite an adventure tonight as you take a look at old glory up there and all the other flags. I mean they are just starched, blowing straight in that. Stiff win from right field. Three and one. You feel down at the third base sometime, Mike DeMille. Anything like Candace to Park Red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, blew, it blew like that quite often. For a strike at 3 1 breaky ball and gets it over full count. You know, there are times I think where Jeff has better control over his breaking ball than he does his fastball. Nothing wrong with that. But I just think there are times when he's got better command of that pitch. He's going to throw it again 3 2. Hopped up out of play on the third base side. Seems like every time we're down here, it's always windy. Here in Arlington, there's nothing to stop the wind. <laughs> here in this part of the country, you just get blown away. And 
A lot of times you have a night like this. Fortunately, no rain, though. We were told that we're going to get some rain tonight. Little pop up outside of third, long run, David Bell, and he makes the catch right in front of the Mariners' dugout, two away. Good hustle by David Bell, a nice play. Almost overran it. Came close to overrunning that ball. Take a look at it again. You can see the reaction of David Bell as he comes in, and then all of a sudden, whoop! <laughs> nice play, David. So two outs for Texas with one aboard, and that'll bring up second baseman Randy Velarde. Man, he's played a great third base. Well, yes, he has, and uh, that wind uh, on pop-ups and balls that are hit like that, that wind can make the ball do funny things. Down and away on Randy Velarde, ball one. Jeff Nelson taking over in relief with two on and nobody out in the sixth. And now has one on and two outs here in the seventh. Lined into right center field, a base hit for Velarde. Mateo heading for third. The throw by Cameron, not in time. Rangers have runners at the corners with two outs here in the seventh inning. That's the first hit off of Jeff Nelson in relief. Yeah, and Velarde does not hit Jeff Nelson very well at all. Coming into the ball game, he's one for 13. Against Jeff Nelson. And now Nelly will have to take a look at shortstop Alex Rodriguez. With two on and two outs. Alex has had some success against Jeff. He's four for ten, so that pencils out to a 400 average. Hey, Rod, a single tonight, scored a run in the sixth inning. Fake move to third, look over at first base. A Rod came into the ball game, batting 250, no home runs, no runs batted in, and the Rangers' first four games. Ball one. We were talking with Patrick Parks Rodriguez before tonight's ball game about Alex. He said, Alex, early in the season, probably trying to do a little bit too much. Everybody knows he's a great player and wants to impress everybody, his new teammates. And he's probably out there trying to do a little bit too much the first few ball games. Well, I think that's only a natural mm -hmm. uh, tendency. Uh, you hear you get a big contract and you want to do a lot for your ball club. I know I had a chance to to visit with Johnny Oates before the ball game and I said how is Alex fitting in with the ball club and he says he's been outstanding he's I've known Alex since he's been 16 years of age and where he is really of a great benefit right now to him is the way he conducts himself in the clubhouse all three three and oh and every day so many press conferences John Blake the PR guy for the Rangers said since the start of spring training he's held 20 press conferences well, I think everybody up there in the Northwest realizes how talented uh, Alex is. Ball four, so A Rod with a walk, and now the Rangers have the bases loaded with one out here in the seventh inning. And Jeff Nelson will have to take a look at one of the toughest hitters in this ball club. The cleanup man, Rafael Palmero, and here comes Lou Pinnell out of the dugout. Two outs, bases are loaded. Activity down to the Mariner bullpen. You've got Norm Charlton and Jose Paniagua getting loose. Charlton two days ago, two scoreless innings in the 10 to 2 win against the Oakland Athletics, and that's going to be it for Jeff Nelson. So you got the left handed bat up there in Rafael Palmero, and the Sheriff will take over in relief Norm Charlton with the bases loaded and two down here in the seventh inning. The sheriff rides in from the bullpen to take a look at one tough hitter and Rafael Palmero. So as the change is made, stay with us. We'll be back after this timeout. Jeff Nelson hoping that Norm Charlton could get the final out of this bottom of the seventh. 7-2 Seven Mariners over Texas. Sunday wrap up your day with NASCAR Victory Lane. A full hour of everything you need to, to get from the pole position to the winner's circle. NASCAR Victory Lane Sunday 9 o'clock 
only on Fox Sports Net. Rich Waltz with you back at the ballpark in Arlington. Gentlemen, news and notes from around baseball. It has to do with disabled list. Ken Griffey Jr., five to seven days from coming off and being ready to go. That's what the Reds doctors say. Ishmael Valdez on the Angels DL. He'll come off to face the Mariners next Friday. And Derek Jeter is penciled into the Yankees lineup tomorrow. All right, thank you, Rich. Norm Charlton out of relief. Base is loaded. Palmero check swing. The pitch is down. Did he go on the appeal? He did not ball one. Mariners lead seven to two. Base is loaded, two outs. Palmero, the eighth career Grand Slam home runs. It's a one run game. The Mariners seven and the Texas Rangers six. Rafael Palmero, his first home run of the season. And it's a grand slam here in the bottom of inning number seven. And here comes Lou back out of the dugout to the mound. And you can see, wasn't any doubt about that. Nice smooth stroke by Paul Merrill. Ninth career grand slam. And with that grand slam, that will force Panella to go back to the bullpen as that ball leaves the yard. And Jose Paniagua is going to come in and take over for Charlotte. So Rafael Paul Merrill, a grand slam home run with two outs. Mariners lead. 7 to 6, and here comes Jose Paniagua on in relief. We'll be back right after this timeout. Seattle Mariners baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom, one mission, low fares. By Pennzoil, protection under the toughest driving conditions. And by your Northwest Ford stores. Visit your Northwest Ford stores, home of the Ford Escape. Rafael Palmero, a grand slam home run. Mariners now lead the Rangers 7 6. Jose Paniagua on in relief to face catcher Punch Rodriguez. Ball one. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Palmero. Red. You see the target. Want to be out of the plate, and Charlton just got too much of the plate that time. Won that ball in the outside corner and uh, didn't quite get it far enough out there. The ball is going to shoot out the right field, and a night like this with the wind blowing in from right field, the ball will take off to right field. Ball two, two and all the count. Yvonne Rodriguez, one for two with a double. Out of the box. One of the big plays of the sitting red. Jeff Nelson hitting Ruben Mateo on a 2 2 pitch with one out here in the center. Yeah, and I know that 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 bothered Jeff Nelson because uh, obviously did not want to have, have that uh, that happen. And also, the base on balls he's not comfortable with. Fly ball into right center field. Ichiro is there to make the catch, and that is out number three. Four runs for Texas on only a couple of hits. The grand slam by Palmero after seven innings. Mariners seven, the Rangers six. This National Sports Report Sports Break is brought to you by K-Swiss. Howdy. I'm Kevin Garcia with the Sports Break for the National Sports Report. Second in the Winston Cup, Jeff Gordon goes for the pole in Martinsville. As NASCAR gears up for Sunday's Virginia 500. A disappointing season in Portland ends suddenly for Sean Kemp of details on his exit from the Blazers. Plus complete second round coverage from the Masters. Tiger Woods assaults a leaderboard in Augusta. All that and a whole lot more coming up tonight on the National. Well, it's now the Mariners 7 and the Rangers 6 as we go to the top of the 8th inning. St. Friends coming up tonight at 10 p.m. It's the Northwest Sports Report. Rich Waltz goes one-on-one -on -one with Alex Rodriguez. We'll break down tonight's game and Sean Kemp checks into rehab. 30 minutes of local sports news you want to know about tonight at 10 p.m. The Northwest Sports Report right here on Fox Sports Net. Tom Lamp.
Pipkin leads off the top of the eighth inning. Ball one from Pat Mahomes, and this is a big inning right here, Red, for the Mariners to try to answer the Rangers in their big four run bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, well, so far they have not been able to do anything with Pat Mahomes out there. No. I mean, he's retired the last 12 Mariners in a row. So Mahomes has done a, an excellent job for the Rangers coming in and shutting uh, them down. In four innings, he's given up only one hit to the first batter that he faced, John Olerud, an RBI double back in the fourth inning. And he replaced starting pitcher Rick Helling. Two and one, the count on Tom Lampy. Two for three with an RBI single in the first and a home run to right field back in the third. Fly ball into left field, a deep rusty Greer going back to the warning track to make the catch. One away, and that's 13 in a row retired by Pat Mahomes. Folks, we want to pass along our condolences to uh, Bill Kruger, who lost his uh, mother earlier today. Peg, his mom passed away after. Long illness, and uh, we want to pass along our deepest uh, sympathy and condolences to Bill Kruger and his entire family with the passing of his mom, Pet. Bill, normally very much involved in our Fox telecast. Thoughts and prayers are with you, Billy, and your entire family with the passing of your mom. Here's third baseman David Bell. Two and all. I can feel it. Two and one. Rangers, highest ERA in the American League last year, 5.52. Ball three, three and one on David Bell. Rangers hoping to turn those numbers around this year. It's a pretty good hitter in the ballpark. Deck is Ichiro. He's had a good night. Brown balls. Tough stop at third by Kennedy. Toss across. Got him. Nice play by Ken Kennedy. And that's 14 in a row retired by Pat Mahomes. Hard hit ball by David Bell. But Kennedy makes the play. Here bring comes Johnny Oates. Yeah, it brings out the skipper is uh, probably going to go down to the bullpen and bring in the left-hander to be facing each year old. Texas Ranger bullpen without John Wetland. The closer this year is Tim Crabtree and a left-hander Mike Venafro will take over in relief. Super job and long relief by Pat Mahomes for the Texas Rangers. So Benefro will take over and relief. Mariners lead by a run, seven to six, with two outs here in the eighth. As the change is made, don't go away. We'll be back after this timeout. We know sweat on hardwood, blood on ice, flesh on diamonds. Welcome back to the ballpark in Arlington. Two outs for the Mariners here at the top of the eighth. Mariners hanging on to that one-run lead, seven to six, here in the eighth, uh, and each hero will be the first to face the new pitcher left-hander Mike Venafro. Each year old, two for four with a double and a run scored in the first and a single in the second. Well he certainly got the Mariners off to a good start in the game tonight. He, a lead off double and scored uh, on the home run by McLemore. Side one ball and one strike. Pat Mahomes read a super job in long relief, retired 14 in a row. Two and one. Mariners are happy to get him out of there. Yeah. Tony gave up the one hit, as you pointed out, the first batter he faced uh, 
Older would double, and then after that, shut him down. Two and two. Here's an numbers for Mahomes. Four and two thirds innings, one hits, zero, zero. One strikeout. You can see the number of pitchers thrown by Mahomes. Did an excellent job keeping uh, the Mariners off the scoreboard because they had a seven run lead. Each row had uh, two home runs during the spring. Takes one outside, ball three, three and two. Good eye at the plate. At 387 last year for the Orange Blue Wave. Seventh batting title. Chopper towards short, cutting across though. Kevin off his glove. And it ricochets into center field. So Ichiro gets aboard here in the top half of the eighth inning. You know what? If Caminetti catches this ball, I don't, I'm not too sure they're going to throw him yeah. out anyway. Even if he catches this ball. But obviously it goes off the end of his glove. But when he catches that ball, I think going that direction and unable to get that much on the throw. I know Caminetti's got a great arm. But I think Ichiro would have beat that out anyway. That's an infield base hit for Ichiro, so he's got his third base hit of the night. One out with two outs for second base for Mark McLemore. Ball one on Mac. Jump start of the offense with a line drive. Two run home run deep to right center field into the Ranger bullpen. You know, if Ichiro gets a good jump, he might go here. See if. Uh, Lou Pinell is thinking that uh, maybe the Mariners can steal a run by getting that runner down to second base and then a base hit. And they would steal it off of Benefro and not Pudge. Snap throw to first by Rodriguez and each row gets back. Two and all the count on McLemore. Yeah, you see that's where this, this guy is so valuable. So you know that with a good speed of each row. But he just may shut down the Mariners running game knowing you've got a guy like Rodriguez behind the plate that throws so well. But he didn't throw out every one of them. With the first base and Ichiro gets back. Rangers know very well about Ichiro and his speed. Mike Paul, the advance scout for the Texas Rangers, spent a lot of time in Arizona watching the Mariners. Was also in Seattle for the three game series against the Oakland A's. Inside, ball three, three and one. Back the board. Mark makes his home nearby, just about a 20 minute drive from the ballpark here in Edmonton. You know he's going to get a fastball here, three and no oh count. Edgar due up next. Winifred was not going to fool around, trying to throw him breaking balls. The glove of Pudge Rodriguez for ball four. So McLemore with a walk will send Ichiro to second base. So two on and two outs. Big at bat right there to extend the inning for McLemore to give Edgar a chance to swing the bat with two men on. And let's see what uh, what Johnny Oates decides to do here. He has a right-hander throwing yeah. in the bullpen, but you know and I know that. When Edgar is swinging the bat well, it doesn't make any difference whether it's left-handed or right-handed, whether uh, you're going to get him out or not. But I think Johnny's going to play the percentage and bring in the right-hander. And uh, we'll try to get Edgar out. Jeff Zimmerman, Jordan's older brother, will take over here in the top half of the eighth inning with two out and two outs. Mariners looking for a little breathing room. And Zimmerman will take over and face Edgar Martinez. Mariners lead the Rangers by a run. Seven to six. They have two men aboard. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this timeout. Say friends on Sunday the Mariners finish up this three game series right here in Arlington as they take on Alex Rodriguez and the Texas Rangers. Coverage begins at noon right here on Fox Sports Net. And here's a look at the pitching matchups coming up on Sunday. The Chief, Freddie Garcia, start number two against Kenny Rogers, Red. Should be an interesting matchup. Kenny Rogers, the crafty veteran left-hander, going against the young, hard-throwing Freddie Garcia. This pitching matchup brought to you by AT&T Broadband, the Northwest premier provider of TV, Internet, and phone services. 
The new pitcher for the Rangers, right-hander Jeff Zimmerman. Mariners lead seven to six, two on two outs here in the eighth. Red Zimmerman, six foot one, weighs 200 pounds. Last year, appeared in 65 games. You can see what he has done this year. Had a record of four and five last year, but 65 games. He was a workhorse for the Rangers coming in out of the bullpen, and will be facing Edgar. Edgar tonight with a double and two runs scored. That's what he's done against Zimmerman, one for four. Out of play on the first base side, 0 and 1. With two outs, Ichiro aboard with an infield base hit off of Mike Benefro and then the walk to Mark McLemore. We are talking about how Jeff Nelson can be tough on right handers. Well, whenever you strike out a hitter like Edgar Martinez, three out of the four times you face him, you know you've got good stuff. One and one. Big hit for the Rangers in the bottom of the seventh inning. A two out grand slam home run by Rafael Palmeiro. Mariners have two home runs tonight. A two run home run by Mark McLemore in the first, and a solo home run by Tom Lampkin. In the third, back on at first, Ichiro at second base, good speed aboard. On the inside corner, one and two. Edgar thought the pitch was either high or inside of both. Thought it, I think it looked like to me, he thought it was inside. One and two. Right now, Zimmerman with the advantage, one and two. Second base, Alex charges. The throw to first is in time to get Edgar to retire the side. Mariners leave a couple. We go to the bottom half of the eighth here in Texas. Aaron is up by a run, seven to six. Seven six Mariners lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Say, friends, the season is underway, but it's still not too late for you to be a part of Mariners baseball in 2001. Check out the Mariners' affordable 15 game plans. You can choose from three different packages, and with your 15 gamer, you'll also get the chance to purchase tickets for some of the biggest games of the year. To order, call 206 346 4001. Designated hitter. Andres Galarraga leading off the eighth inning for the Rangers. Oh, ball one. The big cat, Andres Galarraga. One for three tonight with a bloop single down out into right center field. When Don Baylor taught Andres Galarraga how to hit the ball that is in on him is when he really became a very dangerous hitter. And some great years in Colorado swims and misses one and two. That's where Don Baylor had a chance to, to work with Andres Galarraga and he found out that he could handle that ball whereas when he first came up pitches in on him that had any kind of velocity at all jammed him a lot. Well it's tough to do that now. Two and two. I still think Edgar is one of the best at that handling that inside pitch because he keeps his hands inside the ball. He can still keep the ball fair down the left field line or drive it the other way. Ball three, full count three and two. Pontiac will take it over for Norm Charlton in the seventh inning, got the final out. Coach Brian Price did the job of the ball club last year. Johnny Oates and the other dugout. Out of play on the first base side. Still three and two. innings and gave up only a couple of runs. He is still the pitcher of record. Low for ball four. So a leadoff walk to 
Galarraga, and the Rangers have the tie and run aboard. Trying to have a pinch runner. Doug Mirabelli. I believe is going to be the pinch runner. I know Bo Porter. I don't beg your pardon, Bo Porter. So Porter on at first base for the Texas Rangers. Brings up third baseman Ken Caminiti. Caminiti is 0 for 2. On Bennett in with a sacrifice fly. Ground ball. McLemore to his left. Goes to second and it gets on by Carlos Guillen. Porter to third. Bell backing up. And Porter winds up on a third base. McLemore trying to get the lead run. But the low throw and Dean could not scoop it out of the dirt. And now the Rangers have runners at first and third with nobody out. Tough play for McLemore and a tough play for Guillen. Take a look at it again. McLemore coming up with it and throws it into the dirt. Guillen trying to come up with it, but not do so. And when that ball get away, gets away like that, tying run at third, go ahead run at first. And here's center fielder Chad Curtis. Hops him up. Right side, Olerud and McLemore. It's going to be McLemore takes over, and he makes the catch. And holy smoke, a mighty big first out for Paniagua. Porter has to stay at third base, and over at first base, Caminiti. That'll be a fielder's choice for Caminiti and an error on the throw by McLemore that sends Porter around to third. Seven to six, Mariners hanging on to that one-run lead, and here is right fielder Ruben Mateo. A double play, and you can get out of the inning. Right now, what uh, Paniagua wants is a, either a strikeout or a pop-up in the infield. Preferably a double play ball, but those are the three things he'd like to get here. Fake move to third and a look over at first base. Caminetti's not going to try to steal. I don't know what I don't know what Patty Ock was thinking of there. You're not going to get him to try to steal and try to run out of the inning. Mateo hit into a double play back in the fifth inning. Outstanding fastball. Two and one, and Mateo took a big rip. On deck is Rusty Green. even on Mateo and two balls and two strikes. Well jammed that time a fastball right in on the hands of Mateo. Jammed him as you can see that ball trickling foul. Always at first and third one away as you see Arthur Rhodes at the ready down to the bullpen. Yeah he if if Paniago gets Mateo out and they hold the runner third look for Rhodes to come in to face Greer. 2 2. All the way inside the Mariners third base dog out of Rockshead and the counter still even on the table. You don't want to hurt that guy. Not Edgar. Be careful, Edgar. 
Still two and two. Paniagua would love to get a strikeout here. Again a two two. Brown ball fouled away again into the dugout. Where Edgar is sitting in the count stays the same. John Moses with the souvenir. Johnny's concentrating and trying to help Paniagua get this batter out. Again, the 2 2 pitch. Popped up and out of play on the first base side, but we saw a pop up off the bat of Ken Caminiti early in this ballgame, but was heading about 14 rows back. Come back in the middle of play where Tom Lampkin made the catch in front of the dugout. The wind is going so hard in the right field. You can hear it. And our microphone's up here in the booth for win. We can across the ball back in on the Fastballs have been tying Mateo up and jamming with those fastballs. See if he throws something different. Again, the 2 2 pitch. Away on the first base side. We'll try it one more time. Ted Crabtree, the new closer for the Rangers. Bottom of the bullpen for Texas. Lampkin wants a fastball away. Popped up behind home plate. Still. Two and two. This has been a 10 pitch at bat for Ruben Mateo as Rhodes continues to warm up down with the bullpen. Tying run is on at third, the go ahead run on at first base. There's both quarter at third. Caminiti at first base. Popped up left field over toward the line. One will get out of play as the wind pushes it back into the crowd. An 11 pitch at that. Rangers are fortunate that that wind blew that ball into the stands. Otherwise, that ball was not hit deep enough to be able to have the runner from third tag and score. And uh, now, time call as Brian Price wants to come out and have a little visit now with Jose Paniagua. He just had about five or six pitches fouled off in a row, and all of them been on fastball. And it looks like that Ruben Mateo is getting closer and closer to hitting it. What a battle right here. He's fouled off seven straight pitches from Jose Paniagua with two strikes. First and third, one out. We've got a new left fielder for the Mariners, Anthony Sanders, on at left field for the Mariners, replacing Al Martin. So Sanders in left field. He made two great catches the other day. Game two of the series at home against the Oakland A's. With Ryan Franklin on the mound. Here we go. The battle continues. Again, the 2-2. Fouled away again. Pro pitch it back. Charging David Bell toss across the first. It's in time to get Mateo, but on the play, Bill Porter will score. The Rangers have tied the game at 7 7. Look at it again, and you see, really, that was the only play that David Bell had. As he makes the scoop, I think the runner at third, Bo Porter, had a very good jump. They're not going to throw him out at the plate. The only play is.
He's at second base. You can't turn the double play. So the Rangers with the benefit and the aid of an air in the inning. They tied the game here at seven. So that's it for Jose Paniagua and the left hander Arthur Rhodes will take over in relief. The Rangers have Caminiti at second base with two down. Stay with us. We'll be back after this timeout. Credit Union Half Price Family Night presented by KBSG Oldies 97.3. All view reserve tickets are available on a half price basis, only $7.50. The three game series also includes another great value. Wednesday, April the 18th, you can get four view reserve tickets, four hot dogs, four Pepsis for just $45. An $80 value for only $45. Plus, you'll also get a Union 76 Mariner Schedule Cup. Good seats still available. Call 206 622 Hits or order online at Seattle Bear. Com. The new pitcher for the Mariners, veteran left hander Arthur Rhodes. The go ahead run on its second two outs. You see the numbers on Arthur Rhodes this year two innings of work, couple of hits, one strikeout. Facing now Rusty Greer. Greer 1 for 13 against Arthur Rhodes. Oh, and one to count. Jose Pontiac with relief, one inning. Lead off walk came around to score here in the bottom of the eighth inning on the infield out by Ruben Mateo. He picks up the RBI, his second RBI of the year. Dreaded leadoff walk. Good fastball, just a bit outside. One and one. A walk, a fielder's choice, and there, a pop up and an infield out, and the Rangers get a run without a hit. Without a hit or hitting the ball out of the infield. Lined into center field, Cameron Eddie. Ronnie third heading home. The throw to the plate by Cameron is going to be in time. Got him. The collision with Lampkin. Lampkin laid out flat on his back. He's able to hang on to the ball. What a tag by Tom Lampkin as the throw by Cameron barely got to him. And Lampkin got the tag on Cameron. And he, we've got a tie game going to the ninth. Good throw. An accurate throw by Cameron. The ball hits the mound. Takes a hop and look at the play by Cameron or not by uh, Lampkin as he holds on to that ball. A great play by the catcher. It's the swing. These two guys, Kent Caminiti at the plate with Mariner catcher Tom Lampkin. A great play by Lampkin on a great throw by Cameron to retire the Rangers in the bottom of the eighth. Red base hit to center field. Cameron feeling it on the one hop. Makes a strong, accurate throw to the plate and a great play by. Lampkin just to hold on to that ball. Caminiti was being waved all along. No hesitation by Caminiti as he tries to bowl over Lampkin. You see Caminiti lower that left shoulder, but Lampkin takes the collision and hangs on to the ball. Great play on both ends as Lampkin sets up and gets to the ball just as Caminiti tries to level Lampkin. What a play by Tom. Top of the ninth inning, tied at seven, and John Olderwood will lead things off. Three for four in the game tonight. Double the singles and an RBI double. Fouls it away. One and one on John. Jeff Zimmerman got the final out in the top half of the eighth. So now the ball game belongs to Zimmerman and Rhodes in a 7-7 seven, seven tie. slowed the ball yeah. down. I thought that, that they were going to throw Caminiti out easily, but that ball hit the may hit the back side of the mound and the ball did not uh, skip onto the plate the way I thought it would. Lost some speed. Lampkin was waiting for it. Got it just in the nick of time. Cameron shows butt, takes it. Ball one. That took a pretty good pop from Caminiti. Things over with Arthur Rhodes. Two and all the count. Ball three, three and all. 
schedule in the American League for the first time in a long time. This is take a look at new left fielder Anthony Sanders. So very important to get off to a good start. You're playing against teams in your own division. Fastball, first strike, three and one, Mike. First 19 games of the year against the American League West. Side ball four. So Mike Cameron with a one out walk here in the ninth inning. The Mariners hope to capitalize on the free pass to Cameron. Anthony Sanders is making his way back toward the dugout. Looks like Stan Javier will come out to pinch hit for Sanders. So Stan Javier will pinch hit for Sanders. With one on and one away and a 7-7 tie here in the top half of the ninth inning. Here's a perfect example why you want to be able to use your bench and uh, get them in the, the game. This will be Javier's first at bat of the season. You want to be able to give guys like Stan a few at bats. Get, get them in the lineup occasionally so that when you do bring him into a game in a critical situation like he is right now, he's going to be accustomed to swinging the bat and it won't be as, uh, as foreign to him. So you need to get guys like this these at bats. One thing about Lou, he uses everybody during the course of the year. Stan last season, a 275 hitter, five home runs, 40 runs batted in. Did so many of the little things right to help win ball games. Played some outstanding defense. Now you've got speed at first base. And once again, you've got Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate. That may stop. It may stop. Blue from trying to steal. Cameron last year, 24 stolen bases, has a good lead. One on Javier. Good breaking ball. Javier generally comes off the bench and uh, looks fastball that first pitch. And uh, if you can start him off with a curveball or some kind of a breaking ball for the first pitch for a strike, good chance you're going to jump out in front of him. Stan like sitting here at the ballpark in Arlington, 300 career hitter with four home runs. And that jet stream is blowing out to right field. Well hit into left field. Rusty Greer going back to make the catch. Two outs. And back to first base with Mike Cameron. So two down. A shortstop Carlos Guillen. <laughs> Carlos looking for his first base hit of the evening. Reads safely his first at bat and an air by Rafael Palmero. This all season long, it's going to be exciting from start to finish, just like it was last year. Boiled down to the last day of the regular season when the Mariners clinched the wild card. The first cap. Any other catcher behind the plate? I think Cameron would try to steal. Down the left field side and out of play by Gein. One and one to count in front of us. Now Bunch Rodriguez uh, stops a lot of running games. Stops him cold. Strong arm, but the thing about Pudge Red is his footwork. He's so quick behind Well, yeah, he way. is. He has a very quick body. And that quick release. But you also need a pitcher out there in the mound that takes a little bit more time delivering the ball to the plate. Next win. Here he go. No. Mike Camaro with a call. And it goes to two and one on Carlos Guillen. Come up in time. Put a pitch down and in. Well, you be the judge as you go around. Nope, that's not a swing. 
Although we have seen swings like that or check swings like that that they have called strikes. Fifth pitcher used by the Mariners here this evening. Randy Velarde, one for four tonight, a single in the seventh inning. There was a board when Palmer hit the grand slam. Popped up and out of play, 0 and 1. Now has a five game hitting streak for himself. He's hit in every game so far. 220 hitter against Rhodes. One and one. See Rhodes with nobody on base still works out of the stretch. That is a more comfortable position for him to pitch than to do the windup. Feels better working out of the stretch. Popped up in behind first base. John Olerud. Circles underneath, and he makes the catch a tough play because of the wind. John Olerud, a nice catch, one out for the Rangers here in the ninth inning. Look at the flags up there above the bleachers in right field. It has been that way the entire ball game, and John Olerud was able to stay with it. Brings up Alex Rodriguez. Rod is one for three tonight with a single. Five for ten off of Arthur Rhodes. Good fastball down and in all in one. It is all business right now between the Mariners and their former teammate. They had a chance to say their hellos before the ball game. Popped up down the right field side, and this is way out of play. And the count is one and two on Alex. Wants a new baseball and gets one from the home plate up by Paul Emmer. Some deep 
plays in this ball game. Ruben Mateo hit by a pitch in the seventh inning. He was the first to get aboard. And then Palmeiro hit the grand slam home run. Check swing. Two and two on Alex. Otherwise, if Jeff Nelson gets Mateo, the count was even a 2 2 when he hit him with a fastball up and in. Could have been, it could have been a 1 2 3 inning. Fastball misses away. Ball three, three and two. Palmeiro on deck at the grand slam in the seventh. Stroke by Alex Rodriguez. Swung right through it. So two up and two down. Little low outside. Ball one. What a night for Palmero. Three for three. A single, a double, and a grand slam home run, and five runs batted in. He had an RBI double in the sixth. Popped up. We're going to extra innings. Coming in is Sanders going out again, and there's the catch by Javier in left field. Stan Javier taking over in left field for Anthony Sanders, and we're going to the top of the tenth inning. Ichiro to lead things off, tied at seven. First extra inning game of the season. Say, friends, looking for an easy way to buy Mariner tickets? Just log on to SeattleMariners.com, your official source for seats for all the big games. Check out the Mariners' newest ticket value. It's the Wednesday Family Four Pack. Get four tickets, four hot dogs, four Pepsis for only $45. The next Wednesday family four pack is coming up on April the 18th as the Mariners face these Texas Rangers. SeattleMariners.com. Connect with it. What a great value right there. 7-7 seven, seven tie. We go to the top of any number 10 down here in Texas. And Tom Lampkin. So he has a couple of base knocks, a couple of RBIs in the game, including his first home run of the year. All in one to count. After that collision, I think uh, Tom may have a couple of little scratches on him. A good collision with Ken Caminiti. As Caminiti tried to score the go ahead run in the bottom half of the eighth inning, trying to score from second. A base hit to center field by Rusty Greer. Caminiti, one tough customer, and so is that guy right there, Tom Lampkin. Caminiti lowered that shoulder. Pretty good collision, and Tom held on to the ball for the out. Good throw by Caminiti. Ball two, two and one. Don't want to give a ball. Throw a pitch up there that Lampkin can pull. Yanked one into the seats in right field. Back in the third, his first home run of the year. Up and away, ball three, three and one. The wind hasn't subsided at all tonight. It has been steady. Strong gust of wind coming in from right field all night long. Popped up and out of play off to our left. And Lampkin had a good pitch to hit and he just missed it. Had a good cut at it that time. And just fouled that ball off. Here it is. Take a look at it again. That's right there, but look at the swing that he had. Another one. Still for a two. Good at bat this time by Lampkin. Good concentration up there at the plate. Look at the garbage out there in right field circling around Ruben Mateo. We have some of our notes out there. <laughs> Way up high for ball four. A leadoff walk to Tom Lampkin, and the Mariners have the go ahead run aboard. See if they can take advantage of that. Yeah. 
Got a good chance right here for Bell to be sacrificing Lampkin. Lampkin down to second base. Here is David Bell. Take a look at the Ranger closer this year, Tim Crabtree. Bell already around. Inside takes it ball one and look at Caminiti coming down the line so quickly. You can shake hands with Bell. Yeah, I, I, the only chance you're going to sacrifice to run along is you bump the ball to the first baseman because Caminiti's got all the guts in the world. He's going to charge right down there, and if you bunt it to him, he's going to get the force out down at second base. Caminiti's going to be right on top of you. Watch the way he charges. Here he comes. Bell turns the look ball. Look at that. Look at that. Inside again, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. I'm going to tell you what, if they let Bell swing the bat and he pulls the ball, he might kill Caminetti. In there that close. Oh, man. I mean, he's only 45 feet away of that. From Bell, maybe even a closer time is called. Pitching coach Larry Hardy. New pitching coach Larry Hardy for the Rangers out to have a talk with Zimmerman. You know, when you have the third baseman, the first baseman charging and getting like the, it's so close in there, you've got to tell your, your, your pitcher, we want a strike. Throw it right down the middle of the plate and let him bunt it. We want him to bunt the ball because if we have our first baseman and third baseman in that, that shallow, then we can get the force out at second yeah. base. Now, we're going to have a pinch runner. Gibson's going to run now for Lampkin. So Charles Gibson over at first base for Tom Lampkin a fine night for Tom Lampkin offensively and defensively a big role in this ball game. Seven seven tie. Nice game for Tom Lampkin. Had a good night. RBI single and a home run. The tag of Caminiti in the eighth inning to stop the go ahead run from scoring. David Bell trying to lay down a sacrifice bunt. It up behind the play. Coach Rodriguez can't get there. Oh, what a break for the Mariners, and it's two and one on Bell. He met the crew. Look at it again. Bell around the bunt and pops that ball up. You see him dip the, the big end of the bat down, and uh, that invariably will yeah. give you that ball that's popped up. That's why you got to hold that bat nice and steady. You don't want to drop the barrel end, the big end of the bat down. So that Makes you pop the ball up more times than not. David trying to get Gibson down to second base. One of the problems that you have playing when the wind is blowing like this is that you try to hit your eyes get water. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the things that always annoyed me the most playing in the, in the wind like that. So pretty much every day at yeah. Candlestick Park. It was like that at Candlestick. So that might be some of the problems that players have in a game like this. There goes the runner. Hopped up. First base side. Will the wind push it back? No, this one is going to make it up into the crowd. Two and two. Fortunately for David, it wasn't high enough with the wind to push it back like it did on the foul ball hit by Caminiti about five, six innings ago. So the hit and run was up. Yeah. Gibson back to first. And Lou, you know, when he talks about putting on the hit and run, he wants the batter to be able to hit the ball on the ground. Because you hit the ball on the ground, the runner at first goes to second, which is, in essence, the same thing as a sacrifice. Now you've got to go ahead and run in scoring position. So he'd like, yeah, he'd like to see the hitter be able to put the ball on the ground. He does not want you to pop the ball up. David really has to grind out this at bat. Yep. Gibson a lead. Drive, caught it, third quarter, first Gibson gets back. Holy smoke. Caminiti with a fine play, one out. And Gibson was able to put on the brakes and get back to first base in time. The ball was dropped anyway by Palmero. Boy, it's a good thing I think the ball was dropped. You see there, right at Caminiti. And then quickly to first base. Would that have been in time? Well, <laughs> ends up on his hip pockets, but uh, could not see the play at first base. But uh, fortunately, they get Gibson got back in time. One on and one away for Ichiro. 
concentration kept his head nice and still and when he hit it he knew it was gone Mark McLemore won and won the count and the Mariners regain the lead here in the 10th inning on Ichiro's first home run of the big leagues what a night for that young man four hits two singles a double and a home run don't sell his power short he is a line drive hitter. He does not want to hit the ball in the air. He wants to hit line drive and get on base. But don't think he doesn't have some power if he turns in a ball. We have seen him hit some long balls in batting practice. In fact, at uh, Safeco Field, we've seen him hit it off of the hit it here at Cafe. That, uh, that glass yeah. up there. Two and two to count on McLemore. So the Mariners have the lead nine to seven on the home run by Ichiro. Rodriguez so many great seasons as a Mariner now what it could have been Texas Rangers yeah what it might have been and that's the way it is right now ball three full count three and two this young man is something only 27 years of age seven batting titles over in Japan Right side, Randy Velarde to plug up the hole. A little 360 move, and he gets back the ball over at first base with a nice play. So two outs for the Mariners here in the tenth inning. That'll bring up Edgar. Ichiro breaking up the seven-seven tie here in the tenth. Man, did he turn on that pitch? in the strike zone and drills it to right field out of the ballpark. Oh and one on Edgar. Edgar with a double tonight. Up and in fouled it away. Oh and two on Edgar. Jeff Zimmerman has given up one hit. The home run by Ichiro. With Charles Gibson aboard, who was pinch running for Tom Lampton. Big at bat by Tom Lampton to lead off this inning with a walk. Well, you know, it's that lead off base on balls once again. It came back and got the Mariners in the bottom half of the inning. And now here in the 10th inning, same thing happened to the Rangers. Back up the middle, Velarde with a diving stop behind the bag to throw to first. Got it. What a play by Randy Velarde to rob Edgar Martinez of a base hit. But here we go to the bottom of the tenth inning. Our score after the two-run shot by Ichiro, it's the Mariners nine and the Texas Rangers seven. It's this connection that uh, helped the Mariners win on opening night in Seattle 5-4 against Oakland, and they're going to try to do it tonight here in Texas in extra innings. Each hero with a two-run home run in the top half of the 10th inning, giving the Mariners a 9-7 lead that the Mariners turn over to Kazuhiro Sasaki, Red. Well, he has one save uh, already under his belt and looking for number two uh, here this evening. But it was the home run by Ichiro as he jumped on that first pitch. 
And there wasn't any doubt about it. As soon as he hit it, oh. he knew it was gone. Whammo. Home run to right field. So here is Kazuhiro Sasaki. 37 saves last year. A Mariner club record. An American League rookie record for saves. The American League rookie of the year, Kazuhiro Sasaki. Looking for his second save already this season. He picked up a save opening night. Hanging on to a one-run lead, a 5-4 to four win against the Oakland A's. It was his countryman, Ichiro, who has given the Mariners a two-run lead, 9-7, to seven, going to the bottom half of inning number 10. Yvonne Rodriguez will lead off the 10th inning for the Rangers. Frank Catalanato is due up next. He'll bat in Galarraga's DH spot. He was lifted for the pinch runner Porter who scored the tying run in the eighth inning and then Ken Caminiti. So there is Catalanato. The Mariners have used Nelson, Charlton, Paniagua, Rhodes, and Sasaki in relief. Moyer started the game and went five strong innings. He gave up only two runs in five innings. So here is Kazu. He's had plenty of time to warm up in the bullpen. He was throwing in the eighth inning. Low and inside with a fastball and punch. Rodriguez, one for three. With a double. Two and only count. Kazu's got that incredible splitter. Fastball and slitter, splitter. He worked in uh, a slider this spring. Up and in. Ball three is way behind Coach Rodriguez now. Three balls and no strikes. Boy, you don't want to walk the leadoff man and then oh. bring up the tying run to the plate. And that, that'll that keep the butterflies going oh, on oh. your stomach down in the dugout. You're not kidding. Or in the booth. There's a strikeout punch. Three and one. What a game. story going back to Japan tonight with Ichiro and Sasaki trying to close it out. Dan Wilson now catching replacing Tom Lampton. Ground ball. McLemore is there with a the second hop and there is out number one. So Sasaki coming back from a 3-0 count to get Pudge Rodriguez with an easy infield out to McLemore one away. Big first out red. Boy, I tell you what, the best thing the pitcher can do is get that leadoff man of the inning out. But then you're always within a double play of getting out of the inning should you get into trouble. Yeah. Lou Pinnell and Brian Price inside the dugout, two outs away from a win. Here's Frank Catalanato. We are in the bottom half of inning number 10. Last ball for a strike going one. That pitch would have been called a strike last year. A little bit above the belt. Pretty good little left hand hitter in Frank Catalanato. Strike two, zero oh and two on Catalanato. Got a breaking ball over. Ichiro, the big hit. The go ahead two run home run to right field. So Saki looking for two more outs. Splitters in the dirt. Gets away from Dan. One ball and two strikes. Last year, Catalanato, 291 hitter, 10 home runs, 42 runs batted in. Play 
the third base side and the count is still one and two. Look at the defense on the right side. McLemore and Oliver back with one out. Mark Steele's on the outfield grass in right field. McLemore got things going with a two run home run in the first inning. Fouled away. Tops the splitter. And the count is still one and two. Pesky out. Doesn't have a great deal of power, it's just that he's basically a line drive hitter, contact hitter. And uh, sprays the ball around from left field to right field. Tough out. Struck him out. Fastball on the outside corner, and the Rangers are down to their final out here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Strikeout for Kazuhiro Sasaki two away. We got fastball running away that just catches the outside corner. You can see the setup. And you can see Dan Wilson framing that right there at the plate and getting the call. So two up and two down for Sasaki. And here's third baseman Ken Caminiti. He was involved in the play of the game at home plate in the bottom of the eighth. There's a strike going one trying to score from second base with two outs on a single to center by Rusty Greer. Mike Cameron fine throw to the plate the collision with Tom Lampkin Lampkin was able to get to the ball in time get the tag on Caminiti hang on to it after the collision. The game stayed tied at seven. One and one and Caminiti. Caminiti 0 for 3. Brown ball up the line foul. As first base coach Bobby Jones and it's 1 and 2 on Ken Caminiti. Pretty good chance right here Red. Uh, Caminiti is going to take a look at the thang from Kazuhiro Sasaki that split. It. See how he decides to go after Caminiti. Caminiti has not seen a lot of the split finger. Fastball. Well, he uh, ahead in the count. Tried to ride a fastball to see if he'd go after. It. But whenever you throw it that high, the hitter reads that pitch really well, and they don't even don't even offer after it. Too too high out of the strike zone. Might get it now though. Oh yeah. Got him swinging strike three. The ball game is over. He strikes him out on the bang, and the Mariners win it tonight in 10 innings. A final score of 9 to 7. And how about the story going back to Japan? Red Ichiro, the game when he hit that two run shot in the top of the 10. Well, that was the difference of the ball game, but the Mariners demonstrated some power tonight. They hit three home runs, something that they have not done all year so far. So the Mariners in 10 innings, a winner 9 to 7 over the Texas Rangers. The Mariners are now 3 and 1 to start the year. So for Dave Niehaus and Ron Fairley, I'm Rick Chris saying so long, everybody, from the ballpark in Arlington. Final score in 10, Mariners 9 and the Rangers 7. Stay tuned, Mariners wrap up is coming your way next. What a game. to you from our Fox Sports Net Northwest studios. We hope you've enjoyed the ball game from Arlington, Texas. Alex Rodriguez finally reunited against his old mates. A-Rod goes one for four, but the Mariners squeak out the extra innings victory. The story tonight, the big free agent who replaced him. It's amazing, and we're going to get back out to the ballpark for all the analysis and post-game interviews, one that you'll really want to see. It's coming up in just a couple of moments. Stay right there. Your special Northwest Sports Report Mariners wrap-up is on deck. From our Fox Sports studios in Seattle, covering all our teams in the world of sports, sit down, buckle up, and get ready to rock Fox style.
huge win for the Mariners tonight in Texas as they beat the Rangers 9-7. Alex Rodriguez with a forgettable night. He gets the marquee, but the big scene stolen by the newest Mariner. A great night to be a Mariner fan. Good evening once again. I'm Rod Simons. Glad you're with us on your Northwest Sports Report Mariners wrap-up. We're going to head back to the ballpark in Arlington in just a couple of moments. These two teams set to play 20 times this season thanks to that new unbalanced schedule. But there was great, great hype that is leading into this one, and for good reason, too. As you know, A-Rod left Seattle to sign the most lucrative contract in pro sports history. $252 million deal with the Rangers. Emotions have been running high leading into this one. And now we get to the game and fans throughout the Pacific Northwest excited for this one. The script is written. The M's Pacific Rim 1-2 takes care of the Rangers. So let's get back out to the ballpark in Arlington. I safe to, it's safe to say, Rich, that this is one we're not going to forget for a long, long time. No, and I, I would expect that they won't uh, forget this one in Japan for a long, long time, obviously. Um, Ichiro's first home run, the game winner, and Kaz gets the save. And down below, uh, the man of the hour right now, along with interpreter Ted uh, Hyde, is Ichiro. And let's go down there right now. Ted, if you could, let's start with that home run. Ask Ichiro, if you could, to take us through that at bat uh, that led to the game winning home run. Yapari Sayonara home run no daseki yo, so pitch ni pitch pitch to. それをちょっと気持ちを教えてくれませんかまあバントの場面でしたけれどもまあそれがまあワンアウト一塁という形になってま次にはいいバッターがいるのでなんとかヒットでつなぎたいなという気持ちでしたオッケーえ、probably and uh, the runner on first, we needed to score a run, and I got my pitch, and I turned on it. The fact that tonight all the focus was on Alex Rodriguez, did Ichiro notice that, and did that take a little bit of the pressure off him tonight? やっぱりテキサスのホームゲームだから、アレックスのはスーパースターだから、そうアレックスのフォーカスに対してやっぱりイチローのフォーカスじゃないから。he says, of course, it was great to have him take all the limelight. Let's talk about uh, the fact that Kaz saves the game. Does that make this game a little more special? You got, you got two guys and, and an entire country watching you uh, on the edge of their seats, hoping for success, and you get a lot of it tonight. Even more so than just the Japanese fans, this is a very, very special game for Sasaki and myself. If you could, ask him how in the world he survives and has thrived in this atmosphere. Those of us that travel with the Mariners see this horde of media that follow him, a hundred reporters and writers. Every move, everything he eats for lunch is documented, and yet it hasn't bothered him. He's gotten off to such a great start. How has he done that? みんながよく野球今までを野球やってきましたかまあこれはもう毎年大変です特に今年というのはこのスプリングトレーニングの間もそうでしたしこの開幕してからのシーズンもしばらくはそういう状態がずっと思います スタンドを見るとファンの方はアメリカ人の方が多くてアメリカに来てるんだなと思いますけどカメラマンの席を見ると日本人しかいないのでとても不思議な気分ですいつも、I've become very accustomed to this um, It's been like this all the way through spring training And uh, I think it's going to be continuing just like this And I just see the fans And I know I'm in America But when I see the Japanese media I, I sometimes think I'm still in Japan All right, Ted, final question And I guess for all Dave Niehaus fans We need to know In Japanese, how do you say Ask Ichiro this Fly, fly away Because that's the, the home run call here in Seattle やっぱりデイブニーハウスはホームランを打つ時はフライフライアウェイと呼びますけども日本語でそれはどう言ったらいいでしょうか<笑> 
日本語どうでしょうかね、まあ、最後は行ったって言うんですけど<笑>、大きい大きい、デイ,<笑>デイブ先生、ね、with a little more gusto <笑>。All right, Ted. Ted, tell Ishiro thank you, thank you both, and congratulations on a big night. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. What a night it was for、uh, the Mariners as they beat the Texas Rangers. Ichiro with the game winning home run, Kazuhiro Sasaki with the save. But certainly there were a lot of things that happened before we got to the 10th inning, and let's go there now and check out our Horizon Air highlights Wings of the Great Northwest. This ball game started with the focus on Alex Rodriguez, and guess what? The Mariners got off to a great start. Mark McLemore, after Ichiro single with a two run homer off of Rick Helling, it made the score 2 0 0 Seattle. Helling was not sharp tonight. In fact, with the bases loaded, still in that first inning, Carlos Guillen rolls one to Rafael Palmero, and his throw is wide. Edgar Martinez scores 3 0 Seattle at that point. Tom Lampkin would have a huge night tonight at the plate and behind it, an RBI single. John Olerud would score 4 0 Seattle. Bottom of the second, Texas gets on the board. Jamie Moyer hits by Palmero and Yvonne Rodriguez. This is Ken Caminiti with a sacrifice fly. 4 1 ball game at that point. Remember, I told you that Tom Lampkin in the third,、uh, Lampkin had a big night. This was his solo home run. Lampkin stretched the Mariner lead to 5 1. Goodbye, Rick Helling. For the fourth inning, Mariners add to it. Pat Mahomes in. John o l r o o d into the gap. And it's misplayed by the Ranger outfield into an RBI double. Mark McLemore scores 6 1. Seattle at that point. And Mike Cameron follows with a fly ball. Edgar Martinez will score 7 1. Seattle. But then it's the Rafael Palmero sponsored section of the show.、Uh, Jamie Moyer. Palmero with an RBI double down the right field line that scores Alex Rodriguez. It chases Moyer, last man he would face. 7 2 Seattle, that's in the text of sixth. In the seventh, with the bases loaded and two outs, Norm Charlton comes in. And ladies and gentlemen, Rafael Palmero's ninth career grand slam. It is 7 2 Seattle at that point. And then the pivotal eighth inning. Pivotal in many ways. In the Texas eighth, a one run ball game. An, eight, an outstanding at bat by Ruben Mateo after eight foul balls. He bounces this one, and Bo Porter scores with one out, ties the game at 7 7. And this, my friends, is the 10th, and this, my friends, is the first career home by Ichiro. And I still don't know how to translate fly, fly away. And of course, that gave the Mariners a two run lead, and in comes Kazuhiro Suzaki. And Ken Caminiti goes down swinging. Ball game, game over. And the Mariners beat the Rangers. And Seattle has won three of their first four games here in this 2001 season. And what a way to do it. What a way to steal the thunder on Alex Rodriguez's night as Ichiro homers, Tom Lampkin homers, Mark McLemore homers. Lampkin made a tremendous play at the plate. We'll show you that when Bob Finnegan of the Seattle Times gets here. It is 9 7. That's the final. And the Mariners beat the Rangers. Rhodes the win. Jeff Zimmerman the loss. And Suzaki gets his second save. As I mentioned, Bob Finnegan of the Seattle Times will be right next to me in a moment. We'll break down this ballgame, show you that great play in the eighth inning by Lampkin next. <laughs> 